Hey, survivors, welcome to the channel. We're going to talk about acts of omission and boundaries that are broken. And also, was my plastic surgeon from my burn scar revision surgery a narcissist or well intentioned? So, let's get talking. Feel free to join in. Comment below if you guys want to talk about anything in particular. But I have told some of you guys that when I was five years old, I caught on fire and I got some joining. Uh, so, uh, feel free to let me know if there's anything you guys want to talk about. And uh, I just started saying the story about how I let a lot of my subscribers or people who watch know that I've been a burn victim. When I was five years old, the barbecue exploded. So, as I got older, I'm six foot one, so I got real tall. And there's Dr. Doom. Hello, good to see you too. Um, so, as I got older, the scars, I have like scars that go from here all the way down other places too but it got real tight so my armpit was not going in like it should and it would pull so can you see <laughs> i don't think i've shown before they don't really show up can you see on the camera it's like all zigzag now and then it goes up i don't know if you can really see i don't know can you see i don't know but all up and down my side uh you can't yeah so that's also on my arm let's see there's another zigzag right there, uh, a couple other ones. But so anyways, uh, it's called, this is W plasty because it's like a W and this one's like a Z. It's supposed to act like a, kind of like a slinky so the skin can stretch. So I had these Radovan expanders, these plastic balloons that they would pump up with saline solution over, I can't remember if it was two or four months. I think it was four months. So I basically had like two cantaloupes of stretching my skin um and then they do the surgery it's all zigzaggy have to wear pressure garments it's just a big pain it was very very painful um my nickname was rice krispies because you would touch here and because of the air that came in it was all crackly but it was a very painful surgery and it helped for a little bit that z, z plasty right here i have almost it was an identical scar but on my belly right on the belt line and i wasn't sure if i should have that done because uh, I wanted to have children and I didn't know how the scar would stretch. So there's John. So I had the surgery done and it was at a uh, facility that allowed students to come there. So I was under the impression that the students were just watching and you missed it, John. I was showing off my scars. <laughs> but um, so I come out of anesthesia and the what are they called? Resident. I don't know. The student. It was a student. Student um, who had uh, asked him groggy and he's like, I did your arm. And I'm like, oh, thank you. I had no idea what he was talking about. Part of the reason um, I also, I, I had it for medical reasons. It was approved from insurance because it was a medical necessity because it was pulling so bad but also i had a modeling job and you could see that scar and they're like oh we can't use you this was back in 1990 or so and so it's kind of heartbreaking you know i had this modeling gig all lined up and then they take it from me so i said screw it with these scars i'm gonna get them taken care of so part of it was supposed to be cosmetic and uh talking with the doctor if you go back get, get your stitches out and stuff he's like yeah he's like people accept surgical procedures more than natural happenings and he basically said he did the extra scars to make it look like surgery instead of uh you know i thought plastic the, the ones right here like this one and the one on my belly um they they weren't horrible um I think they actually look better than a big old Z. I always tell people I'm Zorro's girlfriend, if you remember Zorro. Um, Mr. Moran, we got to make sure on spelling, it's an A. <laughs> so Dr. Doom, watch that spelling. <laughs> um, so I hope that's a typo. We're being kind. <laughs> mm. Spelling <laughs> makes a difference. And... Um, so he had said, you know, it, it just looks like a surgical procedure now. And I'm like, I went under all that pain uh, for, I, I came here for cosmetic stuff. And it was narcissistic because, uh, not that he's a narcissist. I don't know if he's a narcissist, but um, he uh, wasn't upfront with me. Like, yeah, it's not going to look that much better. Uh, 
you know, on the other ones, this one I did need. This is actually more pronounced now than it was. Um, but at least I can raise my arm without it hurting. Uh, so acts of omission. He didn't tell me exactly what he was really doing. And, you know, we're boundaries broken. I came in there for it to look better too, you know, on the extra ones. So I'm really glad I didn't have the belly one done because um, could be autocorrect. Could be. So uh, how are you guys doing today though? I just got back from my mom's house, had a great time over there. Saw my brother and sisters and sister-in-law. And also my niece had a daddy-daughter dance. Um, and this is where family is really important. My dad had passed away and my niece is adopted. And she uh, identified my dad as her dad um, because, you know, she hears everybody calling him dad. And also uh, she didn't have a dad because she's adopted by a single um my sister. So uh, he passed away and they had these daddy daughter dances. It was really nice that my uh, uh, stepbrother had taken her and they just had a great time. So she was all adorable, dressed up like a little cowgirl. John says my, oh, John says my hamster April is very sick, but she's a really tough girl. She's hanging in there. Oh goodness. I know you were uh, messaging me that she was um, kind of hiding out in her little uh, hut type thing, her little area. Um, yeah, that's hard. I, you've had it pretty rough lately, John, to where your animals, um, they don't last forever. So some of us are really uh, attached to our animals and they can be a great support system. John's taken really good care of a lot of different animals. And yeah, John says, I've been very upset and crying a lot. Um, I can understand that, you know, uh, my friend, she just lost her cat at two and a half years old um, because it got into something and ate too much styrofoam uh, from the styrofoam packing. And she's feeling really guilty about that. And Dr. Doom says, I have a new cor corgi. Is it corgi? I think it's Corgi Puppy next weekend. Nine weeks old. I think I'm naming him Stumpy. <laughs> oh, corgis are so cute. <laughs> I just got to meet my sisters. Uh, kind of looks corgi-ish. I don't know what kind of dog it is. This is cute. His name is Moose. <laughs> this little tiny thing called Moose. <laughs> Nine weeks old. That's exciting. And that's a circle of life, you know. Um, Pembroke Welsh Corgi. I think that translates to some money. <laughs> um, so you said Stumpy. John says, what's interesting is one of my pet snakes saw how I was feeling and wanted out. And he gave me kisses and seemed to say everything will be okay. Sometimes animals pick up on things. And we talk about the different vibrations. Um, sometimes we don't even have to say anything. And they can tell what we're feeling. I know Dixie's pretty good. Not always. But uh, there's times that she really realizes, um, you know, uh, that they can be there for us. And they will come to us. And, you know, we think about like humans, why can't humans always be there for us? And it's a lot of things that I'm realizing is a lot of it is perception. And then the narcissist has a different form of perception that um, pe people have sensitivities. I, uh, I don't know. There's a big to do uh, with some stuff today that uh, people blocking each other and um, accusing each other and things just got out of hand. Um, John says, by the way, family of Woodstock texted me about that rude worker I dealt with last week. They're going to check into it, um, which I'm not sure. If I remember the rude worker, uh, as far as where, I'm sorry, but I don't remember that, John. I usually remember everything you say. Um, and, um, you just had a death in your complex. So, uh, I didn't hear, oh, I wanted to tell you too, John. Uh, I way overslept yesterday. I 
Oh, Dog Defender, <laughs> you say he just woke up and I just said I way overslept yesterday. I set my alarm for uh, 8 a.m. instead of 8 p.m. <laughs> so <laughs> I woke up on time according to my alarm. So sorry about last night, guys. I still dealing with that long COVID and also just being exhausted. Us teachers need a break. So Dog Defender, how are you doing? I know you were in the ER. Um, I believe it was last night and you ended up going home against medical advice is what it sounds like. I don't know what's going on, but uh, hoping you're doing better today. And I'm glad you got some rest. John says, I called a mental health worker that kept hanging up on me and was very rude. <laughs> a mental health worker? Whoa, that's not good. If you think about it, uh, you basically turned him in. No problem, Cynthia, I understand. Thank you. Yeah, because I was worn out. Yeah, dog defender, I'm kind of thinking maybe I love you. I want you to stay, but do you need to go in now? Um, I don't know what what the issues are, but uh, sometimes time is of the essence. Are you sure it's a wise decision not to go back? Um, I don't know. I don't know what you're dealing with, so I don't know. Uh, but I know you're a smart, smart woman. Um yeah, sometimes too, we're like, I'm over it. I got real lucky that my daughter was able to drive when I had my miscarriage. Uh, I wouldn't have gone in. I wouldn't have gone in. I was bleeding out. I was bleeding out bad. And I had 45 minutes left to live. Um, so luckily, she took me. Um, it was just to the point where I'm like, I just want to deal with it later. Um, sometimes that's when you need to go in. Because uh, it saved my life going in. So, um, you know... There's so many uh, twists and turns life can take just on a certain decision that we make. Just like in that instance, you know, if I fell asleep, I wouldn't be here today. Um, and also like with our narcissists, it can take us down different uh, avenues in our life. Like with the Valentine's holiday coming up, is the Hoover going to happen? A lot of times during that holiday time, um, the narcissist will either just uh, what do they call it? I wrote it down today. Um, I'm just at a loss for word. Paper clipping, paper clipping, where they just want to like kind of paper clip a uh, little note that we're still available or we're still thinking about them. And it doesn't mean they're coming back to us or, you know, they're in, it doesn't mean that their intentions are pure. It's just for supply. And it's crazy how that works. But the more you get to know a narcissist, um, oh, I don't know. Will I be your Valentine? You didn't say please. <laughs> sure, I'll be your Valentine. <laughs> John says, by the way, my leg problems are getting better taking care of it. I'm walking a lot better. I think narcissists want us to be like them in a way. Um, woohoo, says Dr. Doom. <laughs> um, so this is, it's not, not uh, it's really hard to get uh, or express the right words. Do they necessarily want us to be like them? Um, yes and no. Uh, they're uncomfortable with us being us. It's in the beginning, they want to be like us, just like I want to be a famous movie star. And once you get there, you're like, whoa, this is not my life, not my comfort zone. So if I was a famous movie star, maybe I don't like the paparazzi or I don't like you telling me that every, um, you know, I got to study and ha have my lines memorized. I'm like, this is just not me. I'm exhausted. I want to go out with my friends. If I want to gain weight, I want to gain weight. Or if I want to cut my hair, it's just a different lifestyle. So the narcissist wants what they think they want. When they get it, they're like, this isn't my life. Uh, it's good for a while, but once that life sets in, that's when they devalue us. Um, I, and I hope that's a good analogy because that's a spot on analogy. It's living a different life and it's something they don't want to pretend to do anymore. So what they do is they knock us down and when they knock us down, they control us, they get everything they want. So we turn into something like them, but then we're doing the reactive abuse and, uh, they only want that for a little while until they find something else. So it gives them that comfort zone, but then they're like, no, I want this beautiful life. Um, 
so they might try something different instead of being a movie star they're going to be you know um i don't know a rock star or a princess or or whatever it would be and they're like i don't like that lifestyle i'm going to try it again with a new supply i don't like that lifestyle and they're always searching and once they get into it, it's great at first until life sets in. When life sets in, they tear us down. And we got to be cautious that we don't turn into narcissists because we start lying. We don't want to tell people stuff. Um, and Doc says, I know you don't know the backstory, so it is hard. I'm in a sticky situation. I agree with you. The narcissist has me in his insurance because we are not divorced and in my medical situation. Okay. Yeah. I, um, are you guys staying together, uh, married, not together, but staying married? I know sometimes people will do that. And in a way it's kind of nice. You're dependent at the moment. He refused to allow me to go to the ER because it was over 1000 and I was supposed to have the MRI brain and C spine tests at the same place. I had all my other testings. Ooh, That's hard. Um, gosh, you're already there. Uh, I'm not sure, dog, are you working? Are you, um, yeah, there's, that's hard. Because now if you go back, you got another ER thing. So I know what those uh, scans are for. Um, but if they're wanting a brain scan on you. Something might be really wrong. Also the C-spine. Uh, I don't know uh, if it would be like a meningitis type thing or if it's something more encephalitis. Um, but I had a friend who, well, it's more my sister's friend. Uh, my name is Elisa. I told you about this book. Uh, it's super cheap now, but uh, it's a really good read that she had. I got to remember which one she had. Ooh, I think it was meningitis. Um, might have been encephalitis. I always mix them up. I think she had meningitis. I don't know. But she had gone to the doctors and she was saying that um, she felt kind of like evil, like something evil. And she didn't feel like herself and she was kind of dissociating. And um, they're just like, you know, you're a 22 year old girl you're probably just emotional and um thinking she's just trying for attention and she ended up in the hospital uh in a coma for many years or i'm uh, months many months and um it's it's a miracle she's alive they were trying to uh take the life support off her so if you need to go i mean if it's something that might be life-threatening they have to accept you and they will bill you and you know if it's your life um you know pay it back when you can uh you're recovering from okay, okay i remember you saying cancer uh have had debilitating headaches since wednesday it isn't a migraine it's a my i'm a migraine sufferer they've pumped me full of all kinds of stuff that didn't touch my headache Ooh, is there pressure on your brain that's one thing we got to be careful of is any kind of pressure um, was the cancer in your brain? Uh, and you don't have to share anything you're not comfortable with. John says, I'm hoping you get better dog defender. Yeah. Cause we love you. Huh? I don't know. I want you. Okay. I want you. Okay. But we're glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. And yeah, take a moment to think. Um, if you need to go in, I don't know, uh, there's different oils or what was it? I wish I, I can reach out to an, ex, um, an ex coworker who she st struggled with, uh, migraines. And I remember her saying she was getting something, uh, for her headaches. Um, it was kind of an off the wall thing. Like, I don't think it was apple cider vinegar or something though, where I was like, what, uh, Peppermint, I can't remember what it was, but it was supposed to help. I can reach out to her if you would like me to. Um, John says, having seen my girlfriend deal with that too. I can imagine what you're going through. Headaches can be terrible. They can make you vomit to where you can't uh, think straight. You can't 
you don't want to hear anything. You don't want to see anything. And when I had COVID, I had a real bad migraine. I actually threw up from it and uh, couldn't get comfortable. And I'm so sickened by him without a soul. I'm ready to call an ambulance. I have, was it peppermint oil? Is that, uh, or are you just saying you have it and it, uh, or are you saying I've heard that peppermint oil works? Why don't you call an ambulance, dog defender? If you're ready to call one, that's, that's your body telling you something. And our body goes through pains. Um, yeah. Why don't you call? Um, if it's not, I mean, since Wednesday, I just want to make sure there's no pressure on your brain. Um, he is dangerous, though. My dogs are here. Oh, um, so you need somebody to care for your dogs is what you're saying? Is that what's holding you up? Do you have a neighbor, somebody, a sister? Uh, yeah, how many dogs do you have? I don't even know how many dogs you have. Um, but you can't bend over at all. Head pressure. <sighs> Mia is here. Hello. Good evening to you. If, yeah, that head pressure can be terrible if it's been that long. Um, I was in nursing school. I don't know everything about, uh, migraines. I know I had some, but you had the cancer. Would there be a possibility that it's either returning or some swelling? Um, I don't know how long ago you, yeah, we're, we're real worried about you right now. Um, I just want to make sure it's not something like what you know, Elisa had where it was encephalitis or meningitis uh, that can go around. I don't know uh, how many people you're around. And I just, with your gut feeling of, I'm about ready to call. I'm about ready to call. You know, don't be like me during that miscarriage where I was like, I just want to put it off till later. And I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. Um, only you know. So Mia is saying hello, good evening to John, and John is saying hi to Mia. Um, but our, our body goes through different uh, pains. Dog says, I'm in my rescue. There are 15, six are in foster. It has been two years since diagnosis. I've had 15 surgeries in 20 months. You might be building up some pressure. Do you think there's a possibility? Um, are the surgeries in your was it brain cancer? I, I can't remember. Um, I had a scare with that because uh, I'm six foot one. And, oh, it was, okay, breast cancer. Okay, 15 surgeries? Wow. That's crazy. Were they just not aggressive enough? Uh, they didn't take enough, so it just kept returning. I know uh, my mom had breast cancer. Uh, luckily, she was able to beat it. So there is hope, you know, but we have to do our part too, which it sounds like you are. sounds like you are. Um, John says, I have a lot of pets too. And God forbid anything happens to me who would take care of them like I do. And <clears throat> we have to remember too that, um, you know, we're important too, that sometimes um we sacrifice for our animals but if we're gone if if we're like really gone forever that you know they're not going to make it sometimes too we have to think you know can i put food in the house and um let them poop in the house you know so we can live to take care of them sometimes we have to take care of ourselves put the water um 15 bowls out uh and then take care of ourselves and call whoever figure, figure something out, pay somebody, uh, somehow. Uh, I wish I was closer to you, dog. I'd go do it for you. Um, Mia says praying, pray prayers for you, dog defender. So, um, what are your feelings? Do you think you need to go in with not thinking about the dogs, not thinking about your ex? Do you need to go in? Um, John says, I'm crying a little right now about a lot of things. 
tell us what you're upset. I know you, you got a lot on your plate. You've been trying to take care of your animals. Dog says, um, but it metastasized to bones, brain, liver, lungs, and skin. My dogs are the reason I'm alive. I hear you. But they, they are your family, you know, but um, we have to be there to take care of them. So I'm just, I'm just worried about the brain pressure. Um, so, uh, dog says, I'm sorry, John, I feel for you. And John, you've had a lot of stuff going on. You've had all that commotion at the apartment complex where at first you thought it was a hostage situation at gunpoint. And then it turns out that the guy being evicted was threatening harm to himself. Um, but that could be quite scary and also you just ran into your person a couple days ago and also the animals um and you're pretty fresh out of uh a deceased loved one uh your person your i'm sorry not not your narcissist your um uh, woman uh of 40 years passed away it's hard to pin it exactly i think it's i'm just feeling a little overwhelmed well you got a lot going on and you're reacting to that you know um, it's like overstimulation. And then when it stops, you're like, Mia says, John, please know all things will work out for the good. Yeah. And, and, you know, we have to accept that, you know, our animals aren't always going to be here. I'm kind of scared with uh, Dixie, you know, she's like 11 and a half years old. And, um, dog says I am too. I'm, in full agreement, Cynthia, I feel his anger toward me for costing money. He will harm my dogs. <sighs> oh. And there's no personal protection order. Uh, you guys. Oh, dog defender, I feel you. And, and that's where it gets scary with these narcissistic people that sometimes we feel trapped. Like we would do that's where the, like the boundaries they don't listen to our boundaries they don't listen to our needs you know um it's all about them and it can be over a thousand dollars will harm things just to get back at us uh is there any way you can let him know that look i will cover this uh no can't because he will lose job and the department told me he will do the um me i don't know what that means main or um well he was a police officer right is that right um his department told you that if his department thinks he will do that why is he still on the force uh has he seen us uh, uh police psychologist um he owes you four hundred thousand. still is detective and the z i don't know if that means a different kind of currency or if that's dollars um i don't recognize the z so he's still a detective i'm kind of uh trying to figure out the department told you who was it in the department that said that and guys you can feel free to join in i'm pretty good at doing um different conversations at the same time i want all of you to get a chance to um because you know you guys are here supporting me i want to support you um a lot of people are hurt by the things that we're going through uh but it is a scary world with a narcissist and you know, a lot of them, I told you before, they can have jobs like that, CEOs and police officers, uh, positions of power, and um, they make it to be a CEO because either they lie or they cut throat or they uh, put on false charm. Um, they're manipulators, you know. Some of them are extremely smart, you know. I'm not going to say they're not smart, but they have to control the narrative and you know um john uh with what you're going through you know um like mia said you know we do have to trust the process you know that things do work out um we have to focus 
our minds the right way. Uh, we can focus on the loss or focus on the blessing. And there was this one lady who uh, had a baby that was born and only had the baby for a few hours and the baby passed away and she was so blessed. She felt so blessed that she got to hold her baby and give her baby kisses and things like that. Or she could have been devastated. You know, she looked at it as a blessing. And I think that's a healthy way to look at it. We have to control our minds that our mental health, um, I think that'd be hard for me to do, you know, um, that's a strong woman, you know, so Oh, dog, I, I wish I knew exactly what to say. Is there any personal protection order on him? Uh, and that's the thing, like, you know, as well as I do, that a personal protection order doesn't really hold back somebody, just like capital punishment doesn't cause somebody not to commit murder. They're going to do it if they want to do it. And um, people, when they're angry, they get caught up in the moment. They don't process what the future can bring. Just like our narcissists in, in arguments, are they going to realize that they're destroying a relationship? They don't look towards the future. It is that... Uh, more childlike mentality. I got kids throwing things and like, oh, I didn't think it would do that. Or, you know, um, if he owes you, you know, a dog defender, if he owes you that money, go to the hospital. He's going to have to deal with it. He owes you that. And he's bitching about a thousand dollar bill. Um, yeah. He owes you that amount of money. Tell him to take it out of that. Tell me to write him a an agreement. Dog Defender says, good question, Chief, and every officer that has shown up here. You can't get an order against... Oh, <laughs> oh damn. You can't get an order against any law enforcement in California. They auto I know they lose their job. They automatically lose their job, badge, and gun. Uh, I told you my degree is in criminal justice. And... Um, I had a job as a uh, probation officer and uh, my ex, at first I wanted to be a cop and, uh, you know, I, I got a job as a cop, but I was pregnant and um, also moving across state to be with my narcissist. So we got back together in that interim time that I got offered the job because I called him. I'm like, I got some great news. He's like, I got some bad news. And I'm like, well, what's your news? And he's like, well, I got the emergency transfer to go back across state to take care of my dad. And he's like, what's your good news? And I'm like, I just got off at this job. I've been trying for two years. And so I ended up going with him. I walked away from my job as a police officer. And then we had a relationship, whatever. But yeah, he put up personal protection orders on me like crazy. Never any violence, uh, never any drugs or alcohol. Um, no drugs, alcohol, violence. And, you know, I, I, I never got like, fuck you, motherfucker. Like I never got in his face, anything like that. No history of anything. and got personal protection orders. So I couldn't carry a gun. Um I'm not a violent person. He just didn't want me to have a job. Uh, yeah, he should pay for it or at least uh, yeah, he owes you that money. Dog says, yep, I've been that is why they said if he loses his job, that's true. That's true. Um, probably, probably. Um Probably a possibility. Let me put it that way. Probably a possibility. Um, do you think over... Is is he in financial straits right now? Uh, dire straits where uh, he's barely making his mortgage? John says, I'd give you the money myself if I could, Dog Defender. I really would. Um, every therapist has said yes. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Um, it gets them to this point of image, you know, they climb up that ladder and um, they can't take any, any fall from that image, especially not to a woman. Um, 
or an ex like guys could do it with a female like i you know or uh, vice versa you you know what i mean was he a type that really raged there's narcissists that rage like crazy uh, you think he was vulnerable um or more covert to where just a braggart and Has he gone to therapy at all? Um, man, especially being chief. John says, that being said, it, if it was you and I together, you wouldn't be dealing with this. Yeah. And, and John, I, I believe that wholeheartedly. That's why I choose your mate wisely. Unfortunately, we don't see those red flags. They're almost impossible sometimes to see. And Dog says no, but he has... Oh, okay. He has that poverty mentality. I need to do a video on that. Uh, come to find out he targeted me for my status. He was as big and knows I have inheritance one day. Yeah. And that's why, um, you know, try not to let people know what you have, but sometimes they can see it, you know, uh, and that's a narcissistic trait. You know, they'll go after your status at all costs. They'll say whatever, even marry you. You know, why does a narcissist get married? It's for the supply. It could be sex. It could be money. Um, and, you know, it could flip-flop. You know, it could start out with one supply of sex in the beginning. And then they feel that, you know, why am I not driving a fancy car? So then they're going to go after somebody who has status. And um, so he refuses therapy. Thank you, John. He found out from my daughter. Oh, ouch. Yeah. And, and that's the thing too. They'll, they'll utilize people for information a lot of times too. And that puts your daughter in a tough spot, you know, um, she, you know, being younger, you know, she might not really realize what the red flags are or what giving up that information can do. Um, is there any credit cards or anything? Because they don't usually bill you to. Do you have any insurance? You're on his insurance and they'll bill you later. Um, and I don't know California either. Uh, John says, I've seen that with not just being an inventor, but I also even wear new shoes. I've seen the jealous look because I have something they don't. I hear you on that. Yeah, just sometimes shoes or a new jacket or whatever, and they'll target. Do you remember when they were doing um, all the, the killing over uh, starter jackets? That was a big thing. And also shoes that people were killing each other over that. Um, even the cabbage patch dolls you know somebody wants something or they you know want to be the best parent they can't uh deal with problems sometimes dog i'm so worried about you how do, how does your do, how does the billing work in california is you have to pay up front or they bill you. Um, dog says, I had no idea. I've never been a money person or wanted my inheritance. He has apparently been telling everyone at work how he is retiring on my dad's. Uh, it is so sick. It freaks me out. Uh, and I think you mean your dad's money? Uh, so this is the thing too, though, is, you know, uh, do you already have your inheritance? Or is he waiting for you to pass? So um, is that why he's staying married to you? Uh, you know, he, he could be prolonging divorcing you because, yeah, he might have to split insurance with you, um, do you on, on my dime. No, but my mom is 99 years old. Okay, so... Uh, if you were to get divorced now, but you got all your medical stuff, you're in such a tough situation. If you got divorced now before mom dies, uh, it's something about, um, he wouldn't be entitled to it. I don't think, uh, 
there's another thing too with like bankruptcy people who file bankruptcy and come into money six months within six months that um the money is taken from the inher uh, like inheritance or that then then you owe it but if you can deal with the six months um and that's michigan i don't i don't know california but or maybe it's florida my friend who uh had that with her mom she wanted to file bankruptcy but her mom was about to pass and she was worried if she did that that uh, it would take from the inheritance uh dog said he is like a buzzard inheritance is protected okay that's good john says he's probably not going to get that money as easy as he thinks so um dog says he can't touch my inheritance but he will make sure i have to spend every dime to survive Just remember this though, dog, is uh, the longer you wait, sometimes it complicates things more. So Mia says, wow, dog, uh, Defender, bless you, your mom. 99 is something to be proud of. It, it definitely is. My grandfather passed away at 98 and a half. It was amazing. Uh, is, is she still coherent? Because my grandfather is still so enjoyable to talk to him. Dog says very vindictive. Yes, you agree that I think you're talking about how uh, things can complicate, uh, compound if we wait. Your dad's dad lives to be 99. Ooh, lived to be 99 is what I'm thinking you're saying. Grandpa, um, that's awesome. <laughs> that's cool. 98 and a half for gr my grandpa. And... Um, I'm still wondering on this vaccination. I don't know. Because um, uh, my mother got blood clots and then grandpa, after he had it, um, he went down quick. But could be coincidence. I don't know. But it is sad when people we really love pass away. Uh, yeah, it is a blessing to be able to live that long, but we definitely have to take care of ourselves. I'm 52 and a half. <laughs> we just celebrated my half birthday a couple weeks ago, but take care of those hips <laughs> and your joints. Arthritis is no fun. Um, I know my brother uh, completely cut out gluten and he had a uh, hyperactive uh, thyroid and cutting out gluten, um, put his thyroid back in check. Sometimes little things that we do make a difference. Your father lived to 88. So there's a lot of longevity. That's something I look forward to. I'm pretty blessed with that too. Uh, except my grandfather, one grandfather, but everybody else, like his sister lived to 93, I think she's oldest, uh, pacemaker recipient which is kind of cool and i don't know if she still is but she was i think like 92 or something when she got her pacemaker um i saved my dad's life for many years too medical things are fascinating how much that they can keep us alive and so we know that there's things with medical that can keep us alive let's talk about our mental health there's things mentally that we can do um but i'm still caught up in dog defender uh because yeah you're uh, how close is he to you uh do you guys live in the same town dog says no my mom has had alzheimer's for 10 long painful years 10 years and my dad passed away suddenly two years ago so that's my family he alienated me i allowed it for past 20 years we have not been together okay so you guys have stayed married for 20 years you're talking about chief he <sighs> I, i'm thinking you're saying that for 20 years you've stayed married um yeah, and sometimes people do that. You know, they stay together, not not to be with the person, but because there are certain perks to it. I had uh, my friend's mom, she ended up getting divorced so he could get on uh, Medicaid. 
So sometimes people, you know, do they stay married? It's not always for love. Those, that couple stayed together till he passed away. Um, John says they're making a lot of medical breakthroughs these days. And my dad was very blessed. Uh, he got two forms of leukemia and it was 2009. It was either 2006, 2009, just a few years before he got diagnosed with leukemia that they had this life-saving uh, it's a Philadelphia chromosome or something like that, um, that taking medication saved his life. That's like $9,000 a month out of pocket, $9,000 a month. Um, dog says he won't leave my, oh, he won't leave my house. He isn't the chief. He is detective. Oh, the chief told me. He, now, why is the chief keeping him? They haven't ordered a psychological evaluation if he's seeing certain red flags um or maybe that's a chief telling on himself because that's what the chief would do too um that's insane that they would keep somebody that mentally unstable on the force uh does he have a history of being abusive towards criminals or people that he encounters not everybody they stop as a criminal john says i've been thinking of how to get that magnetic drive system and a water engine that just uses water pressure to propel it forward i've made a few past projects that show promise inventions are exciting huh i know my nephew is a robotics engineer in his senior year and he's telling me are working on some automatic, uh, automated shopping cart that kind of follows you around and stays at a certain distance. So that's what he's working on right now. The things we need in the, <laughs> the future <clears throat> where we can just walk through the store and have our shopping carts follow us. Um, dog says, that is crazy. Nope, this is a big problem in law enforcement. I've been battling this for 10 years. Yeah, you got that blue code. He is, yes, he is a rage and holiday though ward everyone a raging hmm, i think there's some uh autocorrect going on with that last statement he is wait There is a suitcase that does that, follows you around. Okay, so they're probably trying to uh, kind of create something similar. I didn't know that. Maybe that's what stimulated their thought process. And, you know, they say, uh, even for us YouTubers, you, uh, you know, build upon things. You don't always have to be a uh, thousand percent creative. Um, that's how we learn. We learn from each other. And... Uh, John says, that's cool. I thought of carts that return to store automatically after being used. Tell him I to keep to keep that going, the idea going, definitely. Um, he is a rage holiday, though, ward everyone. I don't know what that means. Hello, Calibri is here. Hi. And we got Dog Defender. Dog Defender's not feeling too good. And her man um, is causing her a lot of havoc right now that she wants to go to the ER. She was there last night. But, um, you know, due to finances, she's a little scared how the ex, because they're still connected with her health insurance. Rageaholic. Okay. Is aggressive and violent toward the most people he arrests. He is one of those cops you don't want to be stopped by. Yeah, some cops, uh, they do see a lot of shit and they get treated like shit. Um, sometimes it's not even warranted that they get treated that way. Sometimes it is, you know, but uh, be careful because, um, you know, uh, they're starting to be afraid of us and we're starting to be afraid of it you know it used to be the cops there to help you and some people are afraid of us and with the disrespect they get so much that they're starting to apply it to all people kind of um on a higher edge you know uh, 
Mia says hello to K Flyer. He says it back to you. John says, hey, Calibri. <laughs> How's that new car working out? I think about you every time I see a champagne something. I love those sunflowers. Look at all that love from John. Um, scale of one to 10, how bad is that headache? Is it a 10? Kalibi says hi to John. Kalibi, any soap opera stories for us from the uh, complex? Hopefully they're staying away from you. And Mia, um, how are things been going for you lately? And my Valentine date, is my Valentine date still here? <laughs> I wish I could see the names, um, like a list of who is still here. You know, I got my Valentine date, Dr. Doom, but uh, I know sometimes you're quiet. Sometimes it's okay just to listen. A pretty good car. You think you made a great decision. That always feels good when we're like, yeah, I made a good decision. Um, Kalibi says no narcs in sight. I think they're giving me a break. And they'll do that. They go through cycles, you know, or they'll find a new target. But uh, relish it. <laughs> Thank goodness. And, you know, be proactive on uh, protecting yourself. But this is the thing, like with, with dog situation, there are times once you get into a relationship with a narcissist, just like I was, I was backed. I had two court orders. No matter what I did, I could not do the right thing. It was impossible. You must notify him, but you can't contact him. You can't email him. You can't ask anybody else to do it. You can't talk, uh, communicate, call. Uh, send a letter. You can't do anything, but you must. And it's like, it's, th there's no way out. You know, uh, and I did have it one time where I got slammed both ways. You know, I was trying to do the, the right thing. I told you guys, I'd just gone to my daughter, sent her upstairs and both courts, uh, one put me in jail for four days. Um, the other fined me for denying his parenting time. I even said, can you just call back, you know, just let her go upstairs, sit down for a minute like a few seconds, I literally just wanted her to go, shouldn't have done that. And then just stand up and come back down. Like I was not trying to deny him. He did talk to her 40 minutes later. Um, so I didn't really deny his parenting time. I was trying to be a good mom. You know, it's first time she's not going to understand what being grounded is if, yeah. So four days in jail for that. So I, I can feel you like, what do I do? You know, um, that third arm invention I built has commercial applications. And what do you mean by commercial applications that you think you can go commercial with it? Um, let me know what you mean by that. So it sucks when you feel like you're screwed either way. And how do we get out of it? You know, uh, sometimes we become reliant on them, uh, because you're sharing the health insurance, you know, uh, but we have to, uh, I don't know the, the, the way the health insurance stuff, I think it's a little better now with pre-existing things. Um, I don't know. I think you might, do you have to wait a year? Uh, to have any care for pre-existing things. Uh, I don't know what the current law is. Um, maybe Obamacare is better, but with accepting uh, pre-existing conditions, but I think regular private pay or through your job pay, uh, it sucks. You feel trapped. Um, it straps on your chest and can be used to carry things while your real arms are free. That's cool. Huh. And it can carry things. Very cool. You're always creative. That little creative mind going. Um, gosh, I'm surprised he doesn't have any complaints of, um, or... Does he get complaints against him? My, mine was a badass cop. Uh, he was just so big that people didn't mess with him that much. Um, very intimidating. Could bench like 550, 56-inch uh, chest, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, oh, your phone died. Well, I've been talking to you. <laughs> 
your phone died. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's okay. I still love you. I'm glad you came back. I know I saw somebody disappear. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> but you guys are sweet with those thumbs up. That helps with the algorithm. Kalibi says, I think these narcs are getting tired, getting bored with themselves. Both narcs have tried to be nice to me, dropped off a birthday card, but no dice, man. <laughs> Sorry about your luck. <laughs> and yeah, you just recently had your birthday. Happy, happy birthday still. Dog says, I'm so sorry. I had to try to find my cord. It's okay. It's okay. It happens. Um, but I do have good news for you guys that I made a purchase today. I have purchased for your viewing pleasure <laughs> a green screen. I got a 10 foot by eight and a half foot with the stand green uh green screen so I can start doing like some pretty cool effects. So um I still got to figure out everything, but yeah, it's going to be fun. I, it's a lot of editing that I'm going to have to do, but feel free to give me some uh, suggestions. And I was telling my brother, my brother's a professional comedian and he lives in a different state, but I would love to do that with him, be a stand up comedian. And um, I do improv, but I, I was telling him today when I saw him, I'm like, you know, I created a new character and I think, you know, you should add it to your your group and I said that I was going to be the invisible woman <laughs> that way I could pretend that I was there so he's like you've been there all along <laughs> I'm like okay thanks John says yeah my nasty neighbors tried being nice to me but I ignored it so you like that idea Mia yeah it's gonna be fun I got all these costumes in my basement I have to use them somehow or um dog says you should watch grizzly true crime her green screen oh Skills are on point. Yeah, mine are not on point. Mine's going to be beginner in the beginning. I told you my uncle is a movie producer in California. I need to contact him. He also teaches uh, movies at um, cinema, cinematics, whatever it's called, at UCLA. Uh, green skin skills, grizzly, true crime. Is it going to curse me up? I, that stuff fascinates me. Um Maybe a, I was thinking something like that. Yeah, scenes from the forest. I'm writing this stuff down. Feel free. Um, I always love the beach. I'm looking forward to the summer. And uh, even just uh, all different. There's, there's this one guy. I love him because of his voice. Uh, he has a very flat effect. Like, uh, <laughs> but I, what is his name? Uh he's got like curly dark hair um white guy uh skinny um no it's not Todd Grande uh um but he he does these shorts and he'll dress up as like medieval times or um I don't know I don't even know how to it's it's like dry humor maybe i don't know how to explain it always wears massive costumes uh is that uh dr todd grande dr grande um he does have a but no this is um he ha has kind of an effeminate voice but uh i don't know if he's australian or uh european or whatever um but it's like sweet pure confused <laughs> like i don't know he just has a way to do it and i wish i knew his name i haven't seen him on my feeds in a long time um very creative and kind of little things like that i, I like his style um and then there's oh it is a happy kelly or whatever she does some cool effects and um yeah there's a lot to learn and oh, yes, I got more thumbs up. You guys are sweet. Whitney Cummings is one of my fun fave comedians, but not her stand up, just her in real life. And Whitney Cummings, I don't know. I've been seeing more female. Uh, I'm kind of thinking if her hair is like this color, is her hair kind of like that? Is that who she is? I know which color. I had a girl, she's like, I love your hair. It's so many colors. <laughs> Sebastian. He looks like a Sebastian. I don't think his name is Sebastian. Um, 
we're gonna look up Sebastian because he looks like a Sebastian. <laughs> I don't think that's his name though. It's probably Daryl. Oh. No, he's is he cute? He looks cute so far. Are you cute? Hi honey. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he's okay. <laughs> that is cute. <laughs> Gotta be nice. Don't be shallow. <laughs> um she is brown now, but was many colors during COVID. <laughs> yeah, do that jello hair dye. Uh, get your hair did. Um, yeah, COVID, that was crazy. We made it through it. And um, luckily, my hair just kind of grows dark and gets lighter. It just grows that way. Uh, I do highlight it sometimes, but it grows that way. Um, Basil. You didn't receive a notice this time? Are you, and you're, uh, you hit the notification bell? Because if you're subscribed, you still have to hit the notification bell. I think you said you, uh, which I'll call it, did hit it before. Uh, but at least I managed to get here either way. Looking, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, Basil. I'm going to read that. <laughs> Looking stunningly beautiful. I appreciate that. Look at that beautiful heart. Calibri says, Miriam Margoyles. Margoyles, Margoyles, Margoyles. I'm gonna say Margoyles. I think is a very entertaining comedian and dramatic actress. And Dog says hi to Basil. And uh, I kind of want to do like some comedy and some drama. Like there's times when you act out skits that you can really uh, understand. Um, even just I've seen people where they, they do the two perspectives. Um, this one lady did the difference between ADHD and autism. And you can't see Basil. How can you guys see people? Tell me how you can see people. Because I don't. I just see I have five people. I don't know who. Um, you guys are so much smarter than me. Oh, participants. Let's see. Oh, okay. I wish it stayed up there, but then I don't see your, um, no, that's, I don't know. It's so confusing. The numbers never match up because, uh, I should have two more people in here and I don't know. Oh, maybe, no, I was going to say maybe it's subscribers, but, uh, because of that, uh, harassment that we went through, I, I oh, maybe I couldn't see Basil either. Let me double check. I didn't read. <laughs> Do you still see John? I don't see John. The back screen is different than our front screen. Yeah. Uh, it'd be nice if it was a little bit more user friendly. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that green screen. I can't wait. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going to put it. I don't want to put it in my basement. Um, because I just don't. I want to. But I can either clear out the guest room. Or have it in my living room. I live alone. Probably in the living room. I'll probably put it over that way. Right in front of that. There's Dixie Doo. Is she there? Yeah, she's laying there. I still got my uh, karaoke, which is really my dad's PA system. I'm using it for karaoke. <laughs> Grizzly has hers in her office. Yeah, I also teach. Um, so I, I want to keep my office. It's small. My office is uh, standard like baby room. Uh, and then uh, I have a guest room, but I kind of want to keep my guest room for the people I don't have over. <laughs> I think I mean, I do have a friend. She comes and stays and uses it with two friends. Um, they both stay in that room. Uh, I'm hoping to move this summer though. He's, I got another thumbs up. You guys are awesome. Basil says, you, oh, you haven't seen Johnson's way up. Yeah, hopefully uh, his phone's not, uh, cranking out on us sometimes. Uh, he was kind of struggling with his phone. Kalibri says, I've been watching BBC. I love BBC and ITC programs on public TV. That's where I've learned of Marima. Mirama. 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 Hmm. Margoyles. Mirama. Marima. Mirama. Mirama. <laughs> Hey, there is John now. Do you guys get to see both? I don't get to see both where you, I see the chat box. What do you guys see? How come I can't, I got to double check. I don't know. 
I do have a great family. Um, <laughs> they lie and tell me that <laughs> I've been there all along as the invisible comedian. <laughs> so I'm glad you guys like the good news that I have. And let me scroll back down real quick. Uh, yeah, so clearly seen from a forest. And of course, now I get a pop-up block in this. So Dog says, so you can learn a lot from her. She, you will love her. Um, cool. Yeah. Uh, and Tag Grande. The flat of voice is something about that was really neat. Uh, I, I just love his voice. <laughs> it makes It's like 70% of the video. Like if I did the same exact video, you'd be like, it's <laughs> something about his voice. Um, she is brown. Oh, I'm sorry. Guys, I'm scrolling back down. Here we go. What is ITC? Uh, I don't know what, what ITC is. I know what BBC is. I use them a lot in my teaching. Um, oh, but, but John, I didn't tell you that why that video your alien defender attack or whatever it was video um i think it went viral because that's the day that chinese air balloon got shot down um and i think it has something to do with like alien invasion or ufos i think it was like just the right keywords he got two thousand views was it in an hour is that what you said two thousand views in an hour um it was like real quick either way um congratulations on that john that's fantastic and it's really weird with the uh algorithm it's like yeah this is going viral and then it stops so you're like come on it was good <laughs> i've had that too where you're like wait what and i think i've done just under that uh that i don't think in an hour i've had two thousand i've had um like 1,656 or something or 1,900, but good job on that. Um, and then it's so funny because other times you're like four views or 12 views. <laughs> like, what? Uh, same tag letters. Um, they do pull from our closed captions, the words that we say. I wish you guys could all talk. Sometimes just the right words. You research green screen effects. Never had to use that method yet. And it kind of sucks because they have where you can, it, it's pretty decent, but it's just a little where it's just not quite right. And I kind of want to look a little more professional. I was surprised on CNN. I'm uh, not a liberal, but I watch CNN. Uh, I don't know why people judge you. <laughs> On what TV show you watch, but um, I'm just used to it. I told you that story why I watch CNN, but uh, they interviewed somebody and what was he on? I want to say it was a the ch uh, like Chinese, def uh, like an American talking about the China uh balloons and stuff, but uh, he had like a security type, not a police emblem shield type thing, but like a security uh person business um emblem and then uh but he had this really bad uh blurb halo that was just because it should have been a green screen i'm like oh i don't ever want that and also when you're testing it i tested it and i'm like no if i move then it's gonna look crappy so green screen on the way and i'm trying to talk my friend into uh doing where he wears a green screen um outfit so he can just hand me things it looks like they're floating uh you love my curiosity or john's john's curiosity um because yeah john uh gets real creative with uh the different things and i'm curious about everything dog says i'm auditory so i imprint them okay so uh some people yeah we're visual or auditory that's international television corp i don't know i don't know who they are i might have watched them oh i think i i think it, their little logo is popping in my head so maybe i've watched them maybe i haven't but i think i know who you're talking about like that's popping in my head so just like you well you said you're you're auditory a lot of my stuff is visual 
Uh, well, no, I'm a good mix. I'm a good mix. Um, because I can do lectures and stuff like that pretty good. Dog defenders being secretive, retracting her message, but I still love you. Kaliwi says, correction, ITC means Independent Television Commission. Okay. And see, you're being truthful, owning your mistake. <laughs> we all make mistakes. So you're not a narcissist. You get an A plus from this teacher. Dog says, there is a feature on Twitter that is called Spaces, and you can make a profile bait group, and everyone can talk, taking turns. Huh. A profile bait group. Is that just um, for bored people or is there a purpose to it? <laughs> um, just like groups like us, like we could do that. Uh, is There's probably what a moderator who picks. John says, I found some perfectly sized sections of compressed wood that I can attach those wheels to, to complete the three wheeler skates. Working on that right now. Uh, is it like a tripod, uh, like a tricycle kind of skate where it's a little safer? <laughs> and, uh, what, how would you do that? Would you have the wider, uh, the two wheels in the back or the front? I think I would need mine in the front. Uh, dog, oh, my curiosity and John's creativity and interest in building things. Yeah, I have a lot of curiosity. We're going to get to the bottom of mental illness. Um, I do want to expand out a little bit. Did you hear about uh, Sam Vaknin, uh, doctor, uh, professor, professor? Uh, he's not doing narcissism anymore. Uh, he just made a public service announcement that he wants to go into gender identity and sexual something. Uh, I don't think he said abuse. Um, a sexual identity, gender. Um, I think he's doing what we're going through right now with people um, transitioning. I think that's what he is doing. Uh, he just announced it either yesterday or today. My days run together when I mess up with naps and stuff and have kindergarten. <laughs> they like fry my brain. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there like one teacher, uh, she was like, I was, I was just about in tears. So yeah, us teachers, we can get to the point of tears sometimes. It's so frustrating. So how I say that the narcissist has a um, childlike mentality, um, that's what we deal with all day long. It's just kids who uh, their needs have to be met, you know, and they go to great lengths. So if they're missing it at home, they get it from school. Sometimes it's the only place that they get love. We just had one girl who, uh, yeah, she's like, oh yeah, uh, my mom's back in jail. Cause she took me, it was, her mom was in jail and then she's like, I get to see my mom. And then, uh, so I asked her about her mom and she's like, no, she's back in jail. She wasn't supposed to have me. <laughs> like, you were kidnapped. So she's a very clingy girl. Um, doesn't follow the rules. Uh, she has, uh, she poops and pees in her pants. How old is she? What grade is she? Is she second grade? Um, no, she's probably, that's so bad I don't remember. Maybe first grade. Looking by where their lockers are. She, I think she's second grade. Um, but the trauma, you know. Um, Melissa is here. Hi, Melissa. And they're sweet. There's this one little boy. He drives me crazy. He runs all over the classroom. He throws things, doesn't stay in a seat, doesn't follow directions, makes up stories. He, he's the one who told me that uh, he saw his father get killed. His dad's alive. Um, and he just has this like little he, I, I, I wish I could do his facial expressions. He's such a liar. And we have this like connection where I'm like, I know you're lying. And I, um, we just had this little stare because he just gets this pleasure. Like he, he tries for the longest time to make it convincing. And then he's like, Oh, I know she knows she's on to me. And he just had, we had this little look like, I know what's up with you. And, um, he's, <laughs> Oh my gosh. I couldn't imagine being his mom. <sighs> yeah. They can be exhausting, but I see. Yeah. They're, they're, they're wonderful, but they will give you a run for the money. And, and it's, harder when they're 
in a group. And that's why it's so sad that we have so many kids. We have like 28 kids and kids are more needy now. Um, you know, both parents working a lot of times, uh, broken families and, you know, um, some of the worst, like, I don't like the wor worst behavior kids. Um, they're a really cool one-on-one. -on -one. You know, you can sit down and enjoy them. You can do things. Another kid, he was trying to leave the building. And uh, luckily, I was able to distract him and bring him back. Uh, he, he's going to be a runner. Uh, he's real young, too. Those stories we call whoppers. <laughs> John, where's our popcorn? <laughs> we got lots of whoppers. <laughs> yeah, we call uh, the like kids that are unruly. Those are our high flyers. We're like, yeah, we got a couple high flyers missing today, or <laughs> a little code. We talk in code. We have to. Uh, so let me scroll up. I think I missed a, a couple of you guys. Um, John says exactly two wheels in back, one in front, or you can use them the reverse way. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm not sure which way I'd prefer. Women, women probably two in the front. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, tell me what you would prefer. I'd prefer two of. Yeah, it's probably stable with it in the back. Oh, well, <laughs> see, because women wear heels. We're like, no, we can do it that way. It's probably more stable, too, in the back. Basil says, I heard that there's a way neurological scientists would be able to know if someone is genetically narcissistic by doing an X-ray brain scan and visualizing the empathy part of the brain. Um, okay, so you said uh, genetically. So the neurological, they can see... Um, the damage that is done. I don't know if that would tie into if they were genetically a narcissist, depending on the age, maybe if it was age related, um, you know, as a young child, but as an adult, uh, I think they would need to do a genetic test, not just a brain scan, because that's a little bit different. Uh, you know, um, where, where did the illness come from? Did it come from your genes or did it come uh, from, from the brain damage to the PTSD or whatever people go through CPTSD. Um, but yeah, I, I've shown, I have some, uh, videos on the, uh, the brain images of a narcissist and you will see the, uh, lack of, uh, functioning in that area. So, uh, I believe it's, um, if you write brain damage uh, or narcissist, I see. I, I can't remember is it exactly going to say narcissist, narcissists, or narcissistic brain. Or but if you type in brain damage on my YouTube channel, my channel, um, you'll pull up what their abuse does to us. And there's like three or four videos, but um, you'll see scans. I share it uh, screen slideshow where you can see the difference of the brain activity and um th there's no way that the the uh depending on the amount of damage that they reconnect and you know can they change um i oh oh dang it i gotta write this down because this was so good i'm actually thinking about reaching out to this lady uh, she has 11 she, she has that uh, dissociation, um, DID, multiple personalities. Um, very interesting. And she was just like, yeah, I can never come back from that. It's permanent <coughs> that the damage is done. Uh, and she has to like let these different um, personalities interact with each other. <laughs> um, but that that's a story for another night because I'm still researching that. Fascinating how, how trauma uh, splits. And she said, um, that, uh, age two or six, six. So the brain is developing and around the age six or seven that since she was in that state, uh, she was sexually abused and by her father and his friends, um, that the trauma kept her in this state of survival that during those developmental years, 
it froze her. She can't continue, you know, because that brain just didn't develop. Um, so, so there is some that basketball, they're also talking about generational trauma. Can that be passed through us genetically? And it's um, still being studied. I'll try to do some more about that. But look at those brain scans. Um, just type in brain damage on my YouTube. And I also have scans of uh, ADHD, bipolar, um, alcoholic brain. And um, there was a story about an orphan who was neglected. And you see, like, so much of her brain is basically dead. Uh, they also lose, um, you know, gray and white matter. Um, dog. Now the brain is neuroplastic. There are some parts that can uh, heal, but not, not all, you know, that's why be careful with the stuff you play around with. Don't kill those brain cells. <laughs> and also with us, you know, honestly, the stuff we go through can give us brain damage. That's why the CPTSD is so painful. Um, so I hope you check that out. I, I'm glad you brought that up, Basil. Dog says, I deleted messages message because I've dropped my phone since many times the keyboard is a nightmare at the moment. Oh, that's okay. Um, it, did you... Well, you're also dealing with a pretty hard headache, pretty bad migraine, I should say. There is a difference. Melissa says hi to everyone, and uh, I got to scroll back down. So, Melissa, thanks for being here. How's your day going? Mia says hi to you, and dog, you are welcome to come. Come on Fridays, <laughs> and also come on Tuesdays. <laughs> so, thank you. You got them. <laughs> um, dog says hi, Melissa. I have so much to give to kids and doing G, uh, geriatrics and elderly. I never uh, run out of extra love for them. How's that? I never out of extra for them. Taught special ed. Look up Tori Hayden, author. Who is Tori Hayden? Tori Hayden. Those story. Okay, so I, I did see that one. So Basil saying hi to Melissa. And of course, now it just moved. We move in a different city, a fresh new start, hopefully. Sometimes, sometimes. Uh, we have to remember, too, though, that when we do move, um, we have to still deal with our issues because uh, sometimes we can get depressed. Um, like, this didn't solve it. That, uh, you know, make sure it's what you really want because sometimes, too, uh, it's a new area. So you don't really know people, uh, it can be frustrating. Like, you know, where do, what's store, where are the stores or, you know, the police department or post office and just be prepared for that. Um, you know, I, uh, I've been many different places and I still feel the same in all the different places. So that's something sometimes, um, you know, uh, I went down to Florida and, you know, it, it, sometimes it's not even what you thought it would be too, you know, but a fresh start, you know, sometimes that is good. Um, you know, if, if you have too many, it, it depends on who somebody is. Like right now, if I, uh, let's say, let's say I had a husband and this was our home and we break up, divorce, and now I got a new person. Is that going to cause issues? Or uh, leaving pictures of my father who passed away, is that going to cause me to feel sad every day or is it going to enlighten me? Um, so just know who you are. Sometimes a, a change will be different. Um, and you took special ed classes. I give, uh, I'm not a special, well, I did do severely emotionally disturbed. Uh, which was kind of like special ed. That's not my endorsement though. Um, but I give you guys credit. That's a lot of work. Uh, dog set a smaller class list, but, uh, not always, but, um, well, yeah, smaller, but a lot more work, a lot more patience or a different, different kind of patience, different kind. Dog says, I told my students 
debts that uh, red light lit up on their foreheads when they looked. When they, I think he said when they lied. Uh, so kids would come up to me and cover their foreheads. <laughs> Yeah, so we do little techniques like that, too. <laughs> uh, I'm going to read that again because I love that. I told my students that a red light would light up on their forehead when they lied. So they would. <laughs> yeah, and you'll see it, too, in the kids. They look away like, yeah, they don't want to make eye contact. And, uh, yeah, and I love that, though. You could tell. Yep. <laughs> I got to use that. <laughs> and that's a lie, narcissist. Um, yeah. <laughs> Dog says they can see sociopaths. And it's a survival technique in school, right? Survival sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Dog says they can see sociopaths and psychopaths in MRIs. Yeah. And uh, I think I shared that screen. It has a... A brain of a uh, psychopath. I think it was psycho. Psycho is what you're born with. Sociopath is what uh, is created through trauma after, you know. But this is the other thing, too. I was trying, trying to research more on which one's more dangerous. And the psychopath, according to the studies I've seen, were more dangerous because they have, like, no empathy. And somebody who's a sociopath... They have a little bit of brain growth a lot of times that, you know, I don't know if it's null and void um, or just a little exposure. So sometimes they can have some empathy. Uh, not much. Um, dog says, Melissa, did you move yet? Or are you preparing to move? Yes. Tell us your story, Melissa. Are things getting better for you? Um, I know it's been kind of hard for you lately. Dog says, has anyone looked up pictures of themselves? Huh. That's a good point, Dog says. Has anyone looked at pictures of themselves before the narcissist and after? Is this the dark-haired girl that they did a shirt series about with the therapist guiding the show? She's uh if you're talking about um the uh 11 personalities with DID she does have dark hair, but she uh, had like some funky colors. I can't remember pink, green, or blue, uh, or mix. Um, young. I didn't hear how old she was. And uh, I was more listening to her as I drove. Probably anywhere from 14 to 22, probably like 16, 18. Can't remember. I didn't look at her real close because uh, it was on my phone when I was driving. Um, Asso says, good point, Cynthia. Also, can focusing on studying narcissism or reading about it a lot make you more negative minded since it has a lot of dark topics? Um, we have to be careful that uh, we don't put red flags onto somebody. So, you know, Dog Defender is having a, a severe migraine since uh, Wednesday. So if her and I had plans tonight, and I'm like, yeah, okay, you have to cancel. You're canceling because it's Friday. That's bullshit. You just don't want to see me. You don't have the balls to tell me. And it's like, whoa, no, I have a headache. And we're like, nope, red flag, you cancel. You canceled last minute. And so we had to be careful on that kind of stuff, that we don't lose out on good friendships because of uh, hypervigilant. We don't want to be hypervigilant about the red flags. And it's one thing I definitely want to warn you not to do uh, or, um, you know, uh, people will get frustrated. Everybody has some triggers. Everybody has some narcissism in them that you're not going to find one person out there that's perfect. So does it make us dark? If we're dark people, it will make us dark. If we're good hearted people, it won't. So know who you are. Just like, um, you know, all these copycat uh, murders or copycat ho hoist, uh, you know, it's, um, some people are like, ooh, that's exciting. I'm going to go try that. Um, and it, it, it will 
bring you to more of who you are at your heart, I guess. If, if people out here are, are trying to research it to heal, um, they're going to look at it at a different perspective. Like that's how it hurts people or that's what I'm doing. Um, so with the purpose for knowledge, uh, so, uh, depends. This is the other thing too, Basil. You got great questions tonight. Thank you for joining. Um, but, uh, there's a sociopath, um, who I see people who are like, yeah, that's a great idea. Or I could get my person uh, back with that. Or, you know, I want to be more like you. And, and she's saying, I'm screwing everybody over, uh, you know, um, and they're picking up on, yeah, uh, that's how you get away with things in life. And I want that for me. And we got to be careful about that. Um, so just be cautious that you're not overly vigilant to where you're shutting out good people who just might have a bad day, like dog defenders having a real bad day. Um, and it's hard to trust people, you know. Uh, excellent question. Dog says feral kids. Oh, my God, so sad. Yeah, <laughs> they are wild. They are wild. Melissa says, if a person that got too bullied is a risk. Yeah. Yep. A person who has been too bullied is a risk factor for narcissism because um because it lowers your self-esteem and uh a lot of these um survival techniques are due to low self-esteem so that's why we have to build up our self-esteem um so depending on the amount of brain damage but and and i'll explain how that happens um because narcissism, there's NPD and narcissism, which is basically being a jerk. Um, so when we're in low self-esteem, we want to counter that so we can feel whole. So, um, you know, uh, we might take advantage of people a little bit or be dismissive of them. Um, it, it just hurts people, you know, uh, Melissa, you took regular ed classes too. You might move March 1st. That's coming up. Uh-oh. You have to keep us posted. That's definitely coming up. I got a few more months for me. Let me know. That's that's a big stress. Uh, uh, dog says it's not at it's actually not a migraine. That's the scary thing. I've had migraines for over a decade. This is other level strange headache. Even ER doctor concurred by my non-response to the meds. Um, that worries me. Uh, did your do doctor think it was pressure? Um, because I know if pressure is building up in your brain, that's really bad. I had this little two-year-old. Her name's Samantha. Um, there was a really bad car accident that I was right going um, onto the freeway. And I see this dad carrying this baby uh, from across the lanes of the highway. And he got um, uh, in an accident. The wife is stuck in the car and I had to get jaws of life to get her out and I had this little baby this little two-year-old um and she was throwing up and they're like that it's uh from the pressure on the brain um I never found out uh exactly what happened if she was still alive I know that she was in the hospital and dad got a ticket and a broken arm and um mom had some injury too but I just remember that little girl. Um, so we might move, Melissa says, to a city that my soulmate's family and friends live. Um, so when you say soulmate, is this a new person or are you talking about your narcissist? Uh, sometimes we still refer to them as that. Uh, please clarify. Uh, and as always, you guys don't have to share anything you're not comfortable with. Um, Cynthia 
dog says, it's so classic to see them with their hands over their red dot. I had to really fight to keep a straight face. <laughs> I want to do that so bad. <laughs> and for anybody who just popped in, she, she was like, when you deal with a little kid, you just tell them that their face lights up with a red dot if they lie. <laughs> so they cover their head. Uh, Basso says, do you think a guy can still live a healthy life without ever marrying a girl or having any kids, not even a close relationship with anyone? And do you think being asexual is, it is a real thing. Guaranteed. It's a real thing. Um, yeah. There are people who don't, don't even think about it. They just don't. Uh, sometimes it can be from lack of libido or their hormone levels could be off. Um, or just never realizing there are people who don't realize like, Oh, that's not just where I pee from. <laughs> There's more from, and I know, I know the anatomy is a little different. You guys know what I'm saying. Um, not everybody wants to be married. Not everybody wants kids. Some people despise the thought of having kids. Um, so yes, um, a guy can still live that way. Um, completely. Uh, now a close relationship, uh, <clears throat> there's, um, you know, uh, what is it, Asperger's, where they have a, a different way of connecting with people. Um, you know, uh, their connections are different. Um, there's all different types of people, you know, and different types of um, brain injuries, uh, desires, religious beliefs. Um, and depends if you mean, well, <clears throat> it can be that way or from trauma that uh, just like a rape victim, they might shut down, never want to be touched again, or they might turn into a super freak that uh, that's their way of dealing with it. If I give permission, then it's okay that this happened to me um, or they never want to experience it again. So yes, uh, can it be healthy though? If they are asexual, yes, they will be content with that. If they don't want kids, they'll be content with it. Um, if being married isn't important to them, um, you know, I'm living an okay life, um, you know, but I'm not asexual. I just am super picky. So it's kind of like I am. <laughs> um, uh, but I'll make it, you know. Um, but I do have a kid. I'm so blessed to have that. And, you know, I, I'd like to be married. Uh, never been married. Um, dog says, I'd invite you over to sit in the darkness with me and your presence would make me feel better. Aww. Have you, oh, I wish I could. Yes. That would be nice to just sit there and just take it in and enjoy. Um, let me scroll back up. I, I hit one key and it goes crazy. What do you think, Basil? But I think, because there are definitely asexual people. Don't It doesn't even cross their mind. They could care less. There's people who don't even like to hug. Um, and dog, I wish I could take you up on that. Maybe one day. Melissa says, yesterday we went to a big mall outside of the town. We shopped at Old Navy and had lunch at Panda Express. I've never been to a Panda Express, but I want to. Um, we had Thai food today. Uh, I love Chinese food. I told you guys I went to China. And depends on where you go. Like Guangzhou had the best food. And uh, Shaman, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> they have body parts. Melissa says we had fun. And that's good. Get out there. Enjoy it. And Dr. Doom, Dog Defender, has this. We believe in him. Uh, dog Defender is a female. But, uh, yeah, you got this dog. And, yeah, she's a wonderful person. So thank you, Dr. Doom, uh, for giving her some support with that. Because uh, she's going through a lot. Um, dog says, Basil, that is a very multi-layered question. I would love to hear everyone's perspective on happiness. Ooh, getting deep, dog. Uh, I think ultimately individuals have all different points of what uh, they want and what's not. And um, your soulmate that you have two kids with. Okay. Um, so you mean the love of your life, not a narcissist. Correct. Um, 
so yeah, we do have different things, you know, uh, I could be content in this place, uh, and other people are like, are you kidding me? Or they're like, you're so lucky. Like everybody's perspective of, of, you know, happiness and is it material things or is it, you know, you wanted a large family and now you're sad that you never had kids or, you know, uh, that's why the more whole we are within ourselves, um, the more we are content with what life brings us. Uh, just like I gave that uh, analogy of that mom who only had her baby for just a short, short period of time before it passed. And she looked at it as a blessing that she had that time. Um, Basil says to dog, yes, I feel, just feel that may be me, but I'm just not sure as I'm 30 now and never been married before and fear that the narc may spoil my relationship. He is, uh, let me read that one more time. Yes. I just feel they, that may be me. Uh, do you feel asexual? Uh, as I'm 30 now, but never been married before and fear that the narc may spoil my relationship. Um, when you're saying that the narc may spoil your relationship, are you saying your past person might affect your future relationship? If so, that is something that I would definitely like to get into tonight, if that's what you're saying. Melissa says he is a super empath. Okay. Um, and be careful that's not to his detriment. Sometimes people give so much of themselves that, um, you know, they don't realize their needs too. So that's one thing. Um, so in the end, he doesn't feel like, uh, um, that, that he's your savior or, um, it's good that, that he's super empathetic, but sometimes people will do it to their detriment and then it can kind of lead things astray. So you love his family and friends. So it sounds like you got something really good though. Um, as long as there's a good balance, you know, that, uh, he gives you your space too. Um, and don't, don't lose yourself in a relationship. Um, but that's good. I think you mean he's kind of like my dad. My dad was an amazing man. Um, so you're very lucky if he's like that. Uh, Basil says, I feared that he may try to verbally abuse my kids too. Uh, if he's a narcissist, yes. Are you still with him? I'm trying to remember Basil. I'm trying to remember. Um, you guys are apart, correct? And you're with somebody new. Is that what it is? please refresh my memory. I try to remember as much as I can. I, I remember your name in a little bit. Uh, dog says she was concerned about meningitis or possible slow bleed. That's what I'm worried about. That's what I brought that up. And also since I have osteoarthritis in my neck, she said you might have a pinched nerve or bulging disc. Did they take your hemoglobin and... Yeah, they need that spinal tap. Um, I don't think it's osteoarthritis, but that's me. I'm not a doctor. Uh, yeah, sometimes they, they it can get scary too. Um, aneurysm maybe? Could it be a possible a dog? I don't know how old you are. Um, and it can happen at any age. You think it might be an aneurysm? If so, you need to go now, uh, doctor or a uh, stroke or something. Um, I wish you stayed. She was in the ER last night and, uh, Dr. Doom says, I want a beautiful family, hard to find a woman worth bringing into my life. The bar is, and you know, as a woman, I'm not taking offense to that. And the bar is really low right now. Uh, same with men. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's why I, I think you're kind of asking, you know, uh, you know, are we going to, let me reword that. But yeah, and, and, and we have to, um, 
you know, really get to know the people, not to rush into it. Sometimes we want something so bad. Um, and the bar is really low, you know, um, because as we get older too, uh, you know, we all have different traumas. There is baggage. That's why you see the divorce rates um, with subsequent marriages. A, a lot of times it's shorter uh, length a time that they stay together. Um, and also uh, the prevalence of a breakup is higher. So that can be the same in dating. We can have traumas in dating. So we just have marriage statistics. We don't always have the dating statistics, but the more people that people have been with, even just one night stands and stuff, people are uh, really uh, bringing baggage or comparison. Uh, so even if you had a beautiful, freaky, fun uh, one night stand, that's going to cause you to compare your new lover to that. And then you're not going to see the value in your new person because you're thinking about somebody who just wanted you for 17 and a half minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm worried about your dog. Uh, but it can, it can, it can happen, you know, it can happen. Have faith, trust the process, just be the best you have your boundaries and the right person. Um, and if not, you know, uh, gotta be content with ourselves, love ourselves. We're our own best friend. And that's, what's helped me through. I still have my bad days, you know, I get it. Dr. Doom, besides I'm your Valentine's day, you forgot, you forgot. <laughs> Um, Melissa says we visited my soulmate, uh, family and friends earlier today. I had great conversations with them. Yeah. Dr. Doom. I do. I had a couple miscarriages and I can't have kids anymore. So, uh, too old, too old. I would love more kids. Um, I wanted four kids. I have one. Uh, so, oh, I wish. Yeah. I love kids. Melissa says his family and friends love me. So you got a good thing going. You got a good thing going. And Basil says, <laughs> Dr. Doom. <laughs> but uh, you can bring me one on Valentine's Day. How's that? You can't give me one. You can bring me one. <laughs> Don't make one. <laughs> I would love another kid. Yeah, I wish I could. I wish I could. I'd love twins. I was supposed to be a twin. I told you guys about that. Melissa says, great Chinese food. All right. So I got to remember Panda Express. I, I grew up so sheltered. Um, I We only went to like Big Boys or uh, Elias Brothers. Same thing. It's the same as like Shoney's. Uh, some of you might not even know what that is, but uh, just like a home cooking kind of place. Dr. Doom says, Dr. Defender has this. We believe in her. And yeah, we're sending some prayers for you. Anybody who prays, definitely. Uh, lift her up and protect her there's some miracles out there and you've been through a lot but you're still here so yes dr doom i do i love basil <laughs> um dog says thank you it's nice to have support basil says i cannot think in any way of a sexual of asexual because i feel like i have to relate to it or meet someone like that in real life to believe it um yeah, I guarantee it. it's true. It is true. Just like uh, kids. If, if you think about kids, kids um, are really not sexual. You know, some, some, you know, kind of mimic or whatever. But a lot of times they're like, what? I didn't even know I had a vagina or like, you know, um, sometimes it might touch them. But just like this kind of feels good too, you know. I gave myself goosebumps, you know, so they might touch themselves, but it's not a sexual way, you know? Um, and you think why, what happens? Why does that kid change into somebody who wants to have sex? Um, you can even look at uh, high schoolers, you know, some are like, that's gross. I don't want anything to do with it. So some people are repulsed, uh, bump of the nasties. Um, and then, uh, some might be scared, but some just don't feel it. They literally don't feel the desire for it. So 
it, I, and that's the thing, like with the narcissist, uh, I'm not calling you a narcissist, but um, the relating, uh, we can understand it when we can relate. So Basil, you're not, you're normal. Uh, we can relate to things um, and understand it with empathy. Uh, so the narcissist doesn't have that empathy for us. So they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? We're like, that hurts my heart when you do that. Or we can't be yelling. Or I, you know, I just need to tell the truth. They don't have the empathy. So they're like, what the fuck? Like, it's dumb. Why are we talking about it? Like, I didn't do anything wrong. I just told you to shut the fuck up. Or I came home late. So fucking what? Uh, or you could have found a different ride. I, I had other things to do. I know I said I'd pick you up, but duh, you got a cell phone. Um, they, they don't get it. They don't get it. Just like, you know, Basil. It's like, what? And, and there's certain things like, why people eat caviar? They just don't get it. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's times you're like, what? No. So it makes sense that you, you know, but it is true. It is true. I guarantee it. Vassal says, yet again, people go through constant changes, which makes me feel like asexual could change his or her mind one day. Maybe, maybe. Um, it could happen, you know. Um, probably not, though. Maybe a little bit. 10%, I don't know. But uh, that's who they are, you know. Um but they've gone their whole life through it, you know. Uh, as you get older, too, your hormones usually dissipate instead of increase. And I'm talking like my age older um, till death. Um, so the chances of it instantly like being like, ooh, uh, is less likely. Could happen. You could fall in love and you're like, ooh, I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> dog defender says basil you in my opinion are still young and have so much life before you so many things can change we have no idea where we are going from even year to year day to day um from now it is all interesting to think yeah and uh it, it it's like dumbfounding almost like what uh and and that's why you know so basil um you know, we don't understand people. It's just like people who are putting cigarettes out on their kids, you know. Um, I don't understand that, you know. Um, like how you can do that. I know people do it, but I'm not going to relate to that, you know. And so that's okay if you don't relate to it, you know. That's why there's studies out there. And we do have to do our due diligence to, is this legit? I wanted to bring that up too. I'm doing our due diligence. I've been trying to do my due diligence and the internet's so frustrating that uh, I did this research on one topic and, and you get answers from yes and no, yes and no. And you're like, like what is it? And uh, there's so, so much misinformation out there, but I guarantee you there are people that are asexual uh basil says yet again people go through constant changes which makes me feel like asexual could change i'm sorry guys i read that uh dog says cynthia they took so much blood than i had and i'm four years older than you yeah and it's kind of uh something to think about um i don't know if you got the J-A-B, um, I don't know, with blood clots or something like that. Uh, I don't know, you know. Now when I ever I have anxiety, it's like, uh-oh, is this like heart-related or broken heart syndrome? Like there's times my chest hurts. Um, and, you know, sometimes we're like, are we going to overlook a warning sign so i'm hoping my heart's fine there are times i wonder um uh, did they see any did did you get your results from your blood tests uh do you know what your iron is all that good stuff um john says i've checked up on april your uh hemoglobin your hemoglobin um you checked up on april hamster she back on the upper level of her cage keeping 
one eye on her. Dog says, keep the bar high, Dr. Doom. Never settle. You told him not to go out with me on uh, Valentine's Day. <laughs> a little virtual date. What do you guys want? on? Uh, it's Tuesday. Do you guys want to do a little Valentine's date, all of us together? Let me know. Um, so Basil says, yeah, and that's, you know, don't sell yourself short. That's why I'm still single because <laughs> I'm so awesome. <laughs> um, we do, ha we do have to open our hearts to people though, you know? Um, so Basil says, I know that might sound really dark, but to be honest, I feel like despite behind that young, the narc sometimes makes me feel like I've lived for too long since I've seen too much evil. Ooh. Um, I don't like the way you worded that. Um, I, I, mm. Do you ever have dark thoughts on life, on continuing life? Um, you know, there are times that we feel like I've just seen it all. Like I, I feel like I've lived a full life of abuse. Um, but don't give up on life. I, I'm not sure if that's sometimes we hit lows, you know, um, so I'm sending you love Basil. Uh, I feel I might not have any more energy to settle down through marriage and kids since I already feel drained of my energy from 30 years of narcissistic supply syndrome. Um, so, uh, um, okay. So are, are you saying that the narcissist, that, um, you had a narcissist and they drained you? Is that what you're saying? Uh, cause sometimes too, I have narcissists that come here, but I, I, um, when you said narcissistic supply syndrome, I think you mean that they took from you instead of you gave too much. I'm getting confused on my wording right now, guys. Sorry. Um, dog says, I entered into my marriage because I felt so sorry for him. Saw the hood dude and he really hoodwinked me and hoodwinked me, everyone around us. Yeah, they can do that. Uh, They'll, they'll do that. They'll play that victim. That's how, that's how they trap you, you know, and you were his target. You know, you had what he wanted and, um, he tugged at your heartstrings to let him in to be the maternal person to save him and care for him and love him. And then he gets what he wants and doesn't treat you the right way. Uh, John says, I just attached the wheels on the skates, going to test them out tomorrow. I've been, uh, I just text my, my skating buddy. And uh, I want to go skating. Dog says, I do have uh, a Cynthia. Do you remember the conversation about Melissa and her soulmate? Um, I'm trying to, to remember. Is your, was the soulmate the narcissist, though? Um, because from what I remember, it was still the same person. And uh, it could be that they're love bombing. Um, so dog, am I remembering it correctly? Cause, uh, that's what I remember. Um, and I thought she was correcting me that I, uh, so Melissa, um, please, please let me know. Sometimes the word soulmate or twin flame can be, mine said that, you know, but uh, it's hard. Uh, they make you feel like you are uh, the best thing ever. And we like hearing it. So we kind of latch onto it. Um, that's one of, it's, it's not always a red flag, but how soon they say it too. You know, if you were with somebody for 30 years, you're like, you're my soulmate. You stuck through it. Um, 
fill me in a little, refresh my memory, because it's 11 o'clock at night and I had kindergartners yesterday. <laughs> Kalimi says, <laughs> I love them though. <laughs> was, yeah, they just, it was constant. It was constant. Uh, narcissistic supply. <laughs> Kalimi says, oh, we're, and they're not narcissistic. They can't get diagnosed till they're, uh, Adults are still growing. They're still learning empathy. Kalibi says awareness and education are key to healing. Perfectly said. That's why I have this channel and I am dedicated to helping you guys. Whatever questions you have, I will do the research. If you don't want to do it, um, I, I'm more than willing to do that for you. Like I said, I'm certified to teach psychology. I find it so interesting. I got my computer all stacked up on all these different psychology things. Basil says, I feel like I may not have any more energy. Um, so yeah, clarify that a little bit more for me. Calibri says, uh, and yeah, clarify that. And I'd like to talk about it. Calibri says, I've been, it's been my journey to educate myself each day to better my knowledge and protecting myself. I believe that God opened my eyes and to see clearly through to who these people are about and yeah there comes a day when you're like yep my eyes are open and you know divine intervention is what i believe in um and and we can we can have some power over our lives too you know we do have free will uh not everybody believes in a higher power um nobody nobody took me up on my valentine's date unless i just haven't gotten that no oh. Um, Basil says that I feel like I may not, my goodness, it's flip flopping. <laughs> I'm going guys have some, uh, patience. So yeah, it's, it's good. Uh, the more we heal, uh, the more knowledge we have, the easier it is and the quicker it is to heal. Dog says Panda Express is not really authentic Chinese food. A friend sent me, sent me a beautiful prayer today. I will share it with you. I would love that. Yes. Um, uh, positive words or um, calming words, uh, words that it's going to be okay, you know, uh, it might be different than we expected. Americanized Chinese food. Yeah. Don't you love like the Chinese buffets where they have like pizza and macaroni and cheese and egg rolls? <laughs> Dassel says books are so much better than research on the internet. Yes. Right here. I, I don't want to move my computer. I got the DSM-5. <laughs> it's right in front of me. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's stacked. <laughs> um, I miss books uh, because I like how you can, you know, you can like put a, a little, you can hold your finger there and read a couple more pages and then go back to it. Like it's a pain on the internet. Um, like you, you click on the wrong thing. It's gone forever. And um, yeah, like there's, yeah, I agree. I like books and the kids don't use books at school, really. Uh, Dr. Doom says bar stays high. That's why Cynthia is my Valentine this year. Oh, <laughs> um, well, thank you. Very sweet. Mia says, so sorry, Cynthia, I have to drive. My apologies. Please have a great night. Thank you. Mia, thank you for joining us. I will be on again tomorrow, a little bit earlier tomorrow because I do have school on Monday. Oh, Super Bowl. Yeah, what do you guys want to do about Super Bowl? Mia, thank you for joining us. Drive safe. Um, yeah, that starts at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and then I can't be too tired for Monday for school. So we can either do like mid-afternoon or we can skip it because I feel everybody will be watching the game. Um, Dog says, I think maybe if a person has bonded to someone and getting there through intimacy, uh, not just sexual intimacy, but soul to soul, if being hurt has created the choice to entertain never being with anyone. Um, as I, I think you're saying, can they change if they're asexual? They might. Um, they might. Um, but yeah, I think they're just going through life not thinking about it. Uh, or be with the wrong person. Sometimes you're with the wrong person too. But there are people that are asexual. Uh, 
Melissa says he has a Holy Spirit in him. And yeah, that's good. That's good. If he's um, a religious person, uh, a lot of times that helps with relationships. Um, Dog says, Basil, I would say you may be feeling the low right now because of you have given, but I flip flopped. I hate when it does that. I see the words American Chinese food. <laughs> um, okay. You might be feeling low right now because uh, of what you have given, but each day is not, you may not feel the same. You may be able to not feel anything about your past. Your ex narc may turn to, to shine, to star also. Um, and, and this is the, uh, um, so, we do go through some lows. We do feel like everything has been taken from us, but this is what is so exciting is that we can refill ourselves. And, um, it's almost uh, like if we use the right mentality where it's a new slate, you know, um, a, a fresh start and we can, we can take it to where it needs to be instead of being caught in what we were. So don't go back to uh, the abuse. You know, if they're not willing to change, um, a lot of times, you know, it, it gets confusing because they might try for a little bit, but that's their character. They're going to go back to it. Um, you know, there are people who have life changing traumas that might get them to change. Just like some people, that's when they, become religious uh because of life-changing events um that they otherwise wouldn't have thought of changing their thought process but if if we look towards the future in a positive aspect it's gonna slowly bring us up it's gonna lift us up and um if we look at the negative it's gonna keep bringing us down so we have to fight that uh, depression we have to deal with what we have to deal with and i know with that um 11 personalities multiple personalities that sometimes we have to we have to go through certain things so i had talked about her uh and i'm not saying we have multiple personalities things like that but she has to go with them she has to work through it um it got worse for her when she uh like fought them off. Um, so we have to sometimes deal with the feelings that we're having. So if we're depressed, we have to focus on what is making me depressed. I'm lonely. Um, uh, or, you know, my health is going, whether you're, you're losing weight and gaining weight or, you know, um, my friends aren't reaching out to me, but do we reach out to them? And we have to get back and touch with ourselves um and there are good days and bad days you know we have to realize that that you know that yin yang the the good and the bad a little bit of good with a lot of bad and then it kind of switches over to the opposite that's the cycle of life you know the seasons that we go through uh so dog is saying good night to uh mia and to drive safe and mo beck sugar chicken i haven't had that good i like chicken probably is um basil says i appreciate it too dog but i truly believe the narc can never become good-hearted person but he can get weaker which helps ease things up yeah and uh a, a lot of times um they can either turn worse uh, more demanding, you, you know, you grumpy old men, <laughs> um, or they, they just kind of like, it's hopeless. I don't have the money, um, to wine and dine somebody to like me. And yeah, they'll, they, they usually don't tor turn towards the kinder ways. Uh, and if they do, it's still a manipulation tactic. You know, it's not a kind hearted thing. Um, it's a facade. John says, take care everyone and be safe. John, thanks so much. Are you still sticking around? Are you saying goodbye? Are you signing off? 
I wasn't sure if you were saying that. Are you leaving me? Are you leaving me? <laughs> Basil says, however, I am still clinging on to hope of starting a better life. And based on the way you worded this, I want you to type this right now. Instead of saying, I'm clinging on to the hope, I want you to turn just the way you speak because your um, words become your actions. I talk about that Chinese proverb where your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your destiny. So I get where you're coming from, Basil, but I want you to say, um, I am starting a better life. I am having a fresh start. Because then you're going to make it real. You're going to live in the moment instead of like, is this achievable? This is way off here as opposed to this. I'm starting it now. Um, let's type that for me. You don't have to type it. It helps though if you do that. Um, because uh, I get what you're saying. Uh, it's a little mind shift. It's a little trick that really does work. I promise you, if you start um, changing your word patterns. Uh, you, you say your biggest dream has always been to go no contact whenever I get the chance to. You got the chance right now, baby. Um, what's holding you back? Kids. Because um, you can still go no contact. We can talk about that. What, what's holding you back? And if this is your biggest dream, you can achieve it. Uh, what's John says, my text vanished again. I was going to say good night to you, Cynthia, and everyone have a good night's sleep. Lots of love to you, John. You're always so supportive. And um, each day gets better, John. Uh, ups and downs. But it's like, look at the big picture. So I know you've been having a hard time. Go snuggle with little April. And uh, we'll see you hopefully tomorrow. You guys didn't tell me about... Uh, um, Super Bowl. Maybe we'll just wait till Monday. I don't know what you guys want to do. Dog says, Basil it is my keyboard. I'm saying one day his influence and negative feeling uh, he has left on you one day may be gone and he will turn to dust. Night shine. <laughs> the exact opposite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. At least you clarified that. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, the influence and their negative feelings that they put into us will um, be alleviated over time. It takes time, but trust the process. Trust what we have to go through, the grieving process of what we've lost. And John says, oh, okay. Doug says, I saw it, John, but the keyboard and connection is glitchy tonight. Uh, it's not on my side, is it, the glitchy? Um because I do have Ethernet upstairs. Basil says, appreciate it, Cynthia. You're really kind-hearted and YouTube dog defender. And that's because that's what's so nice about this channel. We have a great group of people who are here to help each other. And it's so nice that we understand the things that we're going through. Um, not everybody understands what narcissistic abuse is like. And Basil is a big smile to John Moran. Dog says, thank you, Basil. You are a beautiful soul and a good person. Yes. Never forget that. Look in the mirror. Sam's not here anymore. She's, I told her she was supposed to wink. Um, sleep easy, Mr. Moran. Um, says Dr. Noom. Dog says, have a great night, John. I can't wait to hear about the skates tomorrow. Yes. I can't wait to get a pair. <laughs> I'll order them. Um, Basil says, the narc I've experienced can never run out of money. Being rich is one thing, but wealth is everlasting. Well, what about, what's going on with Andrew Tate? How's his money going to be pretty soon? Um, and the uh, um, billionaire uh, with the crypto coin or cri cryptocurrency, um, that went away quick. And a lot of people... Yeah, I don't know this person. He might, you know, be rich. But uh, look at all these famous stars. They're broke. They went through all their money. Uh, is he a spender? Maybe, you know, that money is going to be gone. Or he might start getting sad and becoming a gambler. Um, you never know. You never know. So wealth is not everlasting. I used to have $20 in my purse. It's gone. You spent it. <laughs> um, no, 
uh, wealth is not everlasting by any means. Uh, some people, you know, get lucky and it stays with them. But even like, uh, you know, uh, King Charles, you know, if his country gets overtaken, uh, his wealth is gone. And there's some stuff where you're like, whoa, I didn't think that would ever happen. Um, you never know. Don't know what's in the cards in the future. Dog says, Bessel, I am growing every day. I am more independent and free. I am starting my new forever. Positive affirmations every day. It is YouTube tonight. Cynthia. Yes. YouTube uh, can be helpful, you know. Dog says, I've not seen Sam in forever. Yeah. Her and Nathan, I think, are talking. Yeah. It's funny. He asked me out for coffee. And then, <laughs> like to me <laughs> red flag <laughs> um i hope she's doing good i reached out to her too and uh yeah they just goes to me so that's what it is you know but there's there's where you, you know just don't chase after people you know i was kind i was trying to help them but uh i think they're doing all right and I, I do worry that I was hoping to give her some information on, um, you know, she's not yet divorced and uh, she's got to play her cards right. And, you know, I don't know what they're doing. Uh, but yeah, I miss her. I miss her. Worry about her. So I was going to look up. I just, oops, no, I want to see if she replied. Um, that's the thing. Like, I do try to keep in contact with you guys, check in on you. Um, I don't stalk you guys. Yeah, I haven't heard from her since the 27th. So, I think she's okay, though. I think she's okay. So, guys, uh, it is 1117. I don't mind staying. Um but if you guys would like, we can wait till um, Monday. Uh, feel free to let me know about Sunday because it is Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, Dog says you can make one bad investment. And not only that, he may go east and remove his presence from your life. You two may move on and it will just be a new start. Have hope. Yeah. And uh, no Super Bowl for me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, I'm, uh, my neighbor moved and bought a house, so I was going to go there for a little bit. He used to have Super Bowl parties next door, so I'm going to go see him for a little bit. Um, but I'll probably be back early, uh, probably through halftime. So um, maybe we can do one for like an hour or two. We'll see. We'll see. So, Melissa, have a good night to you, too. Thanks for joining us. Lots of love to you guys. Feel free to hit that thumbs up before uh, you sign off. Basil says going no contact is complicated for now because even though I have my own income independently, we are still sharing the same home instead of wasting money with expensive rental rentals, which are expensive. And yeah, but he has undying wealth. Uh, you know, um, you have to, you have to think about what your happiness is worth. Um, is it wasting money? I, I get what you're saying. It is expensive, you know. Um, and I, I, I don't know what you make. Um, you know, I, I survive on my own. I don't have anybody helping me. It is easier, but uh, your mental health, um, you know, and it, it also holds you up from starting the relationship you're supposed to have. It, it, it. it holds you back from the healing that you need and it keeps you um, getting more traumatized to where it's going to be harder to come out of it. So that's just something to think about. I know it's expensive. Um, I'm not sure how old you are, uh, you know, but dog says, Melissa, wait, we have a question about your soulmate. And maybe better emotionally you are paying. Yeah. Um, yeah, she didn't tell us. Was it dog? Was that was I on point on that? Was that because I think last time she made it sound like he wasn't 
giving her a hard time like possibly a narcissist and then I think I'm reading your mind, dog. Um, but yeah, dog is saying, Basil, that, uh, okay, yeah, that's what I thought. This was like, I know it's sleep. And, and there are times my memory isn't perfect, you know. Um, I was like, I'm getting confused. Is this a new person? And she's like, no, he's wonderful. And I'm like, wait, what? Um, the fact that she was on this channel, uh, if it's the same person, um, you know, uh, she's seeing red flags. You know, um, I'm a cool chick, but, you know, do people really want to come on this channel unless they're really searching for information, um, which is good. I want you guys to do that. Uh, it's, it's really difficult. Basil, my goodness, is this like a prince... He's loving you unconditional. Um, and that's good. We were just confused because um, that sometimes when somebody is super empathetic, um, that could be a sign of something too, that uh, they're people pleasers, um, that it's just, I, I've noticed, um, and I get it, Melissa, like, it seems like everything's perfect. I have noticed this is like a crazy thing. Being unconditional. I always wanted to love unconditional. And I feel it's gotten me nowhere. Um, because uh, that... Um, how do I want to word this the right way? That you give so much. I'm not saying you're a taker. I'm not saying you're a taker. But um, it's kind of like low boundaries, I guess, which would be low self-esteem. Um, I don't even know how to say it. You, just the fact you said super. I don't know. Uh, because for people to love something, they have to um, be worried about losing it. And, um, is he so worried that he's going above and beyond that it's a facade for his abandonment issues or something like that? Um, how does he react, uh, um, if, if you want to do your own thing, does he always have to tag along or, um, is, is he encouraging? And, and there are great people out there. So, you know, I'm not trying to say there's something wrong with him. It was just something you said last time, not necessarily what you're saying today, something you said last time. And can you tell me if you're 90% happy with your relationship? Are you 80, 90% happy? Um, Basil says, they say even though Kanye West lost a lot of money recently, he still has hundreds of millions. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and do you want to be with him? <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. But that's the thing. If, if, you, if you're talking billions, though, uh, does your person have billions? Is is that what you're telling? Because if they got billions, just pay the high dollar rent. <laughs> you know? Um, Dog says, Melissa, you were saying some things before about him not being ready and God chose him. And Cynthia was trying to help you. He's very supportive of you. He's very positive. You're good with him. Okay. So, and, and that's the thing, you know, is it toxic? It's not toxic if we're, you know, good with it. Um, you know, but uh, in general, not necessarily talking about Melissa. Um, you know, if, if we're cool with, um, I'm not talking about Melissa, but if we're cool with, let's say, um, what are you saying? Dog says, 
what is the status, Melissa? Are you not together or are there was something you said? There was something, uh, not a toxic person. So that's good. Um, so this is what I was trying to say is let's say you are into, um, gosh, I got to use the right thing. <sighs> um, I don't know, freaky sex that like, uh, or, or being submissive or something to where it, uh, is like toxic to where you like being submissive and uh it, it, it it's comforting to you that somebody has control over you and sexually you love it and this and that but to where they're like you can't go to work because i need you and you will submit to me to where you're giving up your life um even though you like that part if it becomes toxic even though um it's uh agreed to that the toxicity from a low self-esteem or a need to feel controlled because you don't have control over your life, that that's when um, it's not good. So that's good. He's healthy. And good. How, how long were you together, though? Yeah, so... Um, we want to help you. So we are not going to judge you in any way. Um, is there something that you feel about yourself? Um, you're welcome to come here and just listen, but, uh, you know, I think there's some, some answer you're trying to find. Um, we want to help you with finding that answer, whether it's something about you or something about him, or, uh, are you afraid you might lose him? Um, you know, since September 2019. So several years. And um, yeah, like Doug said, we just care. We're, we, um, at, uh, you know, I, I know it's interesting. Sometimes people are interested in it too. Um, have you ever had narcissist abuse on you? Um, is it uh, a topic of interest for some reason? Are you just like me? It's okay if you just like me. I like me too. <laughs> um, so, uh, and we got a couple people. Feel free to join in, guys, on, on the things that you're struggling with or comment, uh, interact with us. Um, yes, my stepdad told, okay. So, okay. So is that, that might be what brought you to the channel? Um, yeah. Do you still interact with your stepdad? That can be difficult. Um, and is Okay. And uh, Doug says, I feel like all of us are drawn here for a reason. Maybe that is where the issue was. Um, so she did say that her stepdad is totally a narcissist. So that can be it too. And it can be, you know, just in general relationship advice. Um, So let me ask that again, because you said not really, but my mind's going a million miles a minute right now. Um, so are you are you struggling with your relationship with him? Uh, I think I asked if you still see him. You said not really. Is that what I said? Sorry. It's starting to get late. It's 1130 for me. Um, but, you know, not all narcissists are uh, just relationships. They can be parents and they can cause trauma on us. Uh, the narcissistic abuse was too much. Yeah. How, how many years did you endure it? Um, because the longer we're in there and, and there's also different severities of it. You see them occasionally. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's the thing. Sometimes we feel like, you know, I can only see mom if I see him. 
um, I don't know how much he controls your mom, but you know, maybe you can just say, mom, I, I, I would just really prefer just seeing you for lunch or, you know, I can't come to Christmas or Hanukkah this year. Um, 17 plus years. Okay. So that can cause a number on, on somebody. And, um, I thought you had asked Cynthia about, can a man change about something? Is it not getting married or was there some question you had about your soulmate? So, yeah, I, I seem to have remembered it was something. Uh, are you guys wanting to get married? Are you progressing towards getting married? Um, it's good that you've had a couple of years. You know, he's not uh, jumping into marriage. You guys are getting to know each other. Um, Basil says, I was laughing with my friend today discussing how the narc repeats the same made up exaggerated stories of himself in miraculous situations, flaunting his bravery, intelligence, and holiness. They'll do that. You know, they're so brave. But then when it comes to it, it's like, whoa. Uh, yeah, Melissa says, I asked God to stop the abuse many times. Um, and, you know, it's it could have a purpose. It can make you stronger to look out for the red flags for the person you're meant to be with. Um, you know, I did a video on, you know, uh, about not being mad at God. Um, dog says, Basil, my narc is the hero of every story. Is that, uh, like Arabic or something? I know one word in Arabic. Oh, your keyboard's stuck again. I'm like translating it. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, and yeah, as far as the abuse not stopping, you know, um, it's hurt people, hurt people. And the narcissist is using people. And just be careful with yourself that you know you're fair to your soulmate uh your person um that you're with now that um oh dog defender i wish i i wish i should have you call me <laughs> Your, your keyboard keeps sticking i wish there was a way to like i could at least uh dog what do you think? You want to do um, a live chat with me? Or I, uh, can I do that where I add somebody? Can I invite, oh, no. Doug, I think you and I need to do a Zoom call where I can record it. Um, do you have kids, Melissa? Dog is asking. So, Melissa, has it affected you like the CPTSD and that's, that's, um, what you're struggling with. You have two kids. Oh, they're a blessing. I don't know. <laughs> Can you <laughs> go for it, girl? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know if I should be that. <laughs> Are they girls? You have three. I have one. One, two, three. <laughs> Who has four? <laughs> Who's in here that has four? <laughs> two girls. Oh, I love girls are easier for me. I never had a boy, so I don't know. But I have only one girl. Yeah. Oh, well, girls. Any boys? Anybody have a boy? Girl power. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Melissa, um, we love having you here and it, it can be painful. A two year uh, or oh, two month old <gasps> dog has two boys. Okay. There's some boys. Our, our, uh, future is not doomed. There are, 
<laughs> we need both sexes. Um, so your birthday, who's it? Wait, her birthday. Oh, your little, your, your girl's birthday is on Monday. Oh, how exciting. Well, happy birthday to her. Happy birthday. Did someone say doom? Dr. Doom? Yeah, I did. <laughs> You caught on to that. Yes, I was calling your name. Uh, Basil says a narc, narc creates his own set of rules, and through them, he decides to pursue a highly toxic lifestyle of constant obstructive self-love and praise through himself and as many vulnerable people as possible. Yep, and they just don't get it. They don't get what they're doing. Um, Dog says, oh, yeah, it is you. There was something about us coming to your rescue and thinking about your babies. Are you, uh, is that Samantha? Are you thinking about Samantha? Samantha had three kids and you might be, uh, mixing up Melissa and Samantha. And I don't know if you would do that. You're still recovering. So we're glad you're here. Uh, knowledge really helps, you know, and going no contact or low contact you know uh you do have grandma now he's uh how do you feel about him being grandpa because that might be something you're going through um you know uh you have to be careful you know your kids especially in the early ages that you want their brain to develop the right way they don't need to be around arguing and um you know, um, each narcissist is different. Uh, some have lower tolerance. Um, some are just, and it's all so situational. Um, but yeah, just like Basil says, you know, they have their own set of rules. And Doug says, I remember thinking how brave you are having such young ones and trying to heal. And you do need to be brave to uh, tackle this war that we went through and armor up with, with our knowledge and fight the fight. Sometimes we want to retreat or return to the abuse. I don't think you want to return. But uh, since it was 17 years, um, I was a big portion of your life be careful not to feel in the future that um you need that you know uh sometimes a narcissist is a weak em empath um they they can uh <coughs> yeah um, <laughs> yeah, they can be over the top sometimes too, because they can do, um, what they've learned. Um, like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And let me cook something for the funeral or let me do this or let me do that. Um, you know, uh, Basil says to Melissa, I hope you get all the inner strength to get through this. Uh, as soon as possible with more ease and safety through comfort and wisdom. And it's where we have to let our brain rewire. So I'm glad you have a support system. You have, you know, two beautiful little ones. And, you know, sometimes the stress of motherhood can be difficult. Um, so get the rest that you need. And um, <coughs> <coughs> I, I'll let Melissa answer that. Um, but the, the narcissist has learned uh, how to mimic empathy. And they, um, they just don't feel it. Or dog says, see Basil, that beautiful soul showing kindness. Yeah, we love you, Melissa. And I hope you feel that love from the channel. Melissa says, my mom and brother isn't a narcissist. Um, 
Yes, I remember you saying that. So you do, they say for um, somebody, they, they need that one person. So if your mom was strong for you, uh, the one thing I don't like is she stayed with your stepdad that long. Um, so she might. Okay, so we're going to talk about the unconditional love. Um, that I kind of feel that with my dad too. Um, but I know my dad took a beating uh, emotionally. Um, which, are you European? Dog Defender is asking. And, and I'm assuming if you mean live there or just because technically I'm European, but I don't live there. Um, locationally European. <laughs> um, okay. Locationally American. Okay. So, yeah, because we, that's one nice thing about YouTube is it's worldwide. And, um, but there's something, this is what I was going to say, is there something about your mom that she let some of her boundaries, there's no way she likes that narcissistic abuse, you know, um, is your mom happy? Let me ask you that. Maybe she does. Is your mom happy? Because maybe she has uh, low self-esteem to where she is loving unconditionally. It's almost like being a people pleaser. Um, but, you know, um, it, it can be dangerous loving unconditionally. Um, it'd be nice if we all did. It'd be nice if we all did. And I still, I still want that kind of love. Because um, I got that from my... Uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say about the loving unconditionally. Um, it can sometimes be a mask for low self-esteem. So since you said your person is a super empath, it's reminding you of the good in your mom. Okay, so you're used to the unconditional love. So you want the unconditional love, but you can see that your mom has low self-esteem and she's doing that. Um, she is really codependent and um, it, it, it can be almost like a project to, or, or you give so much that you don't have to reflect on your needs. It's, it's a survival technique to give too much. And I've been really digging into that deeper because there is something to giving too much. We're not taking care of ourselves when we do that. Um, Dog says, what do, do you mean by a super empath? Where did you meet your soulmate? Yeah. And sometimes too, you know, certain terms, um, you know, the word super, um, it, you know, she didn't say, and that's the thing we start using, uh, lingo, um, you met him in high school. Oh, so just, I, I hope what I just said made sense about the unconditional love that sometimes it can be a mask for low self-esteem. And since you said super empath, that's what rang a bell to me. Um, so, yeah. I, are you guys planning on getting married or are you um, living together or you don't have to tell me? Um, I ask questions sometimes I shouldn't ask, but I'm just happy for you that. Um, dog says, Basil, I'm just sharing what I see from you, that you're so sweet. Do you think high school sweets hearts have a different bond? Yes. Yep. I think so. They grow up together. And uh, it's a little more pure, you know. Uh, he isn't in touch with his emotions. Um, 
yeah, I, I think uh, that's what my grandma and grandpa were, you know, um, not a manly man. So he, he's um, fine just being him, you know, uh, that's good. That is good. And, you know, um, I do think they have a different type of mom. What do you think, dog? Anybody else? Feel free to. So a gentleman, a warm fuzzy. Does he have a beard? <laughs> we will eventually get married. That's good. Um, yeah. And, and uh, there are benefits to it, you know. Um, that's what says true, Cynthia, about you mentioning the faking emotions. I remember reading about something called crocodile tears. They can be expert actors that can cry instantly to manipulate their victims. Yeah, uh, narcissists will, you know, um, especially more females, too. Guys can do it, too. But it sounds like he's being his true self. That's good. That's good. Um Is he good with kids? Probably if he's a, sounds like a warm fuzzy, like you said. I do think it is a possibility since they have known each other from an innocent time. They, 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 uh, they see it from a different world, you know, like the future is ours. And um, if, they, if they plan on being together, uh, it, it is less baggage. Um, it's a do or die. We're going to fight through this. And, you know, so dog is asking if they're his kids. Basil says to dog defender, let's live. Look at that smile. You made Basil smile. Yeah, because it's uh, just two months. Um, well, since 2019. She's been with them since 2019. Melissa says his trust is gut instinct. He's good with the kids. Dog defendant, you like my smile? <laughs> Melissa says yes. Dog says, oh, I missed that. Yeah, and that's good. That's good. So, um, but yeah, moving forward uh, on the interaction with, um, you know, even just your mom with the, the codependency and low self-esteem, you know, hopefully you can kind of build her up a little bit. Um, both kids are his kids. Yay. They're yours too, honey. <laughs> Faithful is important, uh, you know, um, because, uh, Dog says, so you share childhood and children and you are both religious, correct? Oh, we, we are faithful. Oh, um, I took it as faithful as committed. Um, uh, like believers. Uh, that's what it gets really uh, frustrating with the English language is one word can mean two different things. So moving forward, um, I'm going to have to sign off because I'm getting kind of dizzy tired, but I love you guys and um, I remember, Melissa, do you speak any other languages? Hmm. Let's wait and see. Melissa, do you... We! Oui. <laughs> see? She, let's see. What about tomorrow? Um, what do you guys want to do? I need to be somewhere from 6 to 8.30 p.m. That's all I got going. I could say a one-hour good night to you, two-hour good night to you. That's hard. I don't know what time. I don't know, guys. Um, no, only English. Um, what... I could do early afternoon or I could do uh, 8.30, 9 o'clock for an hour or so. I had to be in bed by 11, early 8. <laughs> 11, I'm good till 11, though. Um, dog, is it you? Are you out three hours earlier than me? Oh, the, tomorrow's Sunday, though. 
um, I kind of want to watch a halftime show. Are you guys free during like 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? We can do something like that. Or I can do a late one. You guys tell me. In English. <laughs> what about you, dog? Do you speak different languages? So type it quick for me, guys, before I log off. What time? Uh, you can even do it in a different time zone, and I'll translate it for you guys. Let's do halftime. No, I want to see the halftime. <laughs> Later show works for you. Okay, I'll do it after the halftime show. Uh, I have to drive home, but we'll do that tomorrow night. So play it by ear. I'm assuming probably 8.30 to 9 o'clock, something like that. So if it's earlier, I'll log in earlier. I'll stay for the halftime. Used to speak both. We watch together. Oh, yeah. Eight or yes, correct. Eight or nine Eastern Standard Time. After somewhere around like end of halftime, unless the game is really boring me, that will go home and we'll. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, French, Spanish, sign language, uh, Chinese, Japanese. Is that it? I can read Italian a little bit. Um, but yeah, it gets rustier. Love you guys too. Thank you so much for being here. And Melissa, we'll talk some more about it. Um, because yeah, 17 years of that is hard. Um, you're three hours behind me. So good. You can have dinner and join us. <laughs> so guys, thanks so much for all the love and support. And I will see you guys soon. Remember, we got that green screen coming. I can't wait to do that. He played thousand, paid thousands of dollars for wigs that look faker than his personality. <laughs> well thousands of dollars i know they can be expensive i got hair extensions before 800 and some dollars silly that i did that and it itched so i cut it out three days later and that was back in uh oh probably 1990 1992 and uh so it was probably worth like two thousand dollars for what i did too i get it so <laughs> like I say that though. Dog says, love you too. Thank you. I'm calling paramedics that the pain doesn't abate. Thanks for your support. Yes, definitely. Please think about that. I want you to be safe and healthy. If it gets any worse, definitely. Good night. All thanks. Thank you at all. You bring to the, all. Oh. Yes. And we all bring stuff to the table. We all help each other through this. So good night to all. Love you guys. See you tomorrow.